Still waiting for a first win. Uh, Cyprus, the visitors to Belfast, where we've just had a, a minute's applause in memory of the late, great Billy Bingham, who, of course, passed away on Friday. Uh, we'll talk more about memories of Billy Bingham uh, at the end of the game, but we're just underway here. The sun is shining. Our commentary team poised, John O'Neill and Michael McNamee. Good afternoon. The sun is out. About uh, 15 minutes ago, we had a horrendously heavy rain shower. Three changes made to the Northern Ireland starting 11 compared to the team which started uh, away to Kosovo. Uh, Trevor Carson, he's in in goal for the injured Billy Peacock Farrell. And uh, Paddy McNair returns. He's into a midfield role. And Shea Charles starts as well. We think they're playing a back four. Carson in goal. Uh, Spencer Ballard, Evans and Brown. Uh, then McMenamin, McNair, McNair, uh, Stephen Davis, the captain, 100th competitive appearance for him, Shea Charles, uh, with Shane Lavery and Kyle Lafferty up front. Uh, and a uh, number of changes made by the Cypriots. They lost 3 0 in their last game in Greece on Thursday. They've got a debut for goalkeeper Christo Dulo and the fellow who uh, rattled the bar in Larnaca a week ago. He starts on the bench, Catalaris. Uh, their captain again by Christo Fee. And Northern Ireland on the attack from left to right. I'll give the, the uh, Cyprus team now. It's uh, Christo Dulo making his debut. Then we think it's a back three of uh, Artematis, uh, Gog and Laifis then it's Pitas, Zionis, Castanos who got a yellow card here a week ago Kiriakou and Panayotou with uh, Christofi and uh, Kakoulis up front John O'Neill is alongside me a wonderful uh, minutes of applause there for Billy Bingham a man you know worked with two World Cups British Championship wins gave you your debut um, a sad moment but a lovely moment of remembrance there. yeah it was Michael uh, you know the whole the whole stadium uh, standing on their feet and clapping for that minute we're in the sunshine here we'll speak more about Billy Bingham but Northern Ireland on the attack with a man wearing 13 who's Conor McMenamin and he's won a throw in it's a home C senior international debut for him here in the sunshine it's astonishing it was less than half an hour ago it's grey and horrible <laughs> yeah, the sun is out and Northern Ireland playing from left to right in their green tops white shorts and green socks against the uh, Cypriots in white shirts and blue shorts. Here comes the long throw from Kieran Brown from the left-hand side into the penalty area. Ballard oh. nearly won the header, of course, a goal score in the last game in uh, Kosovo, uh, but he deflects it uh, just wide of the post, and yeah. that'll be a first clearance kick for the man, all in uh, a brownie-orange goalkeeping outfit and dress. Chris Adolo winning his first senior cap at the age of 25. He played short uh, and out to this near side. Will they actually go infield? Um, every team seems now to build from the back and play it out from the back away to our left Trevor Carson winning his 8th international cap just his 3rd involvement in a senior competitive match and uh, his last start was in Estonia in the friendly back in September his last competitive start uh, was away to Norway in October 2020 remember that Cyprus a week ago in the heat of Larnaca um, nearly scored that Catalaris goal but it, it's nearly broken as Ballard attempted to clear things they've given the ball away Northern Ireland inside their own half and Cyprus are going on a run real danger here Christophe into the area and the cross wasn't a convincing one I think he got a little bit caught up in a, a slick surface the ball is out of play Christophe is uh, Christophe is appe appealing for the corner instead of which after a few moments of, of concern in the Northern Ireland defence and conceding the ball inside their own half um, the all-in yellow Trevor Carson will play it short uh, to one of the two men who have started all four of these little knot of Nations League games that's uh, Johnny Evans, of course Stephen Davis the captain, the other one and Brodie Spencer making his home senior debut after making his debut in Larnaca a week ago wearing 21 and playing on the right hand side of this defence on the halfway line, Paddy McNair back in the team after missing Kosovo his overhead kick has been played into the path of the bald-headed Gogic I think he's had a pretty severe haircut since last week <laughs> picked up by Ballard he also looks as if he's at a haircut I haven't been keeping tabs this is uh, <laughs> on the right hand side Paddy McNair let's see if he's any happier not playing in a, in a back four or a back five role well I have to say Michael, I'm a lot happier that he's playing further up the Shea park Charles has looked impressive yeah, in all his appearances has. so far yeah I'm glad that he's in the team I like I like the, the, the two lads being in the team from the start it's taken four, four matches to get the team selection right John is that right well, well, well the game will decide that or not Brody Spencer on the right hand side Lavery 
who got that opening goal nearly colliding with the goal post. Yeah, I'm trying to work out whether they're playing three at the back or, or, or four at the back. It looks as if they're playing four with Kieran Bryan at, at full back, but that could be very easily interchanged with you know putting putting uh, Spencer a little bit further up. Spencer the throw. Um, and the men in white have coughed it back out to Lavery on the right-hand side. Spencer, nice touch of Paddy McNair in field to oh. Stephen Davis. Oh. Davis had thought that Lavery was going to continue his run to the byline. He didn't, and it's into the hands of the goalkeeper. That's a shame because it was a great move out on this uh, right-hand side here with Spencer and, and McNair, Freeland Davis, and it was a lovely ball into the box, but unfortunately Lavery just didn't read it. Uh, you know, if he had seen the, the pass coming, he was clear through on goal. Northern Ireland, of course, trying to win in the Nations League. After 13 winless matches, 14th attempt, they've got the worst run in the Nations League. Of course, the Republic saw Scotland in some style in Dublin last night. Andorra also won in the last couple of days. They've been winless as well. I think Iceland have gone maybe uh, 12 matches without a victory. San Marino, something similar, but Northern Ireland have gone 13 in the Nations League without a win. And just those three draws, the two one-all draws with Romania in the last campaign, and the nil all draw in Cyprus well, if you a look week at ago. That it was long ball played forward down that Cypriot right hand side, but uh, Kakoulis winning his 10th cap won't keep that in. Just a reminder Johnny Evans and Paddy McNair, Shane Lavery all starting on yellows uh, of the substitutes Thompson White and Liam Dunley also on yellows. Another yellow for any of that uh, six. Uh, group of players and they would miss the next game in September, September the 24th home to Kosovo here at the National Stadium. Well if you look at the, the three games, this one and the two to go, if we're looking for a win this has got to be the best opportunity that, that we'll have. Totally different from the game in Larnaca, uh, I mean it was touching 30 degrees here, Michael, up here I don't think it's touching 3 degrees, it's so cold up here. I, well it's, it, it's, it's, it's got warmer than it was an hour ago, yeah. the sun is out bright sunny afternoon now but I think the team that's on the park if they apply themselves the right way you know there's, there's too much quality on the on the on the field to, to not win this team uh, to beat this team but I haven't said that you know you've got to apply yourself best Northern Ireland chance in Larnaca that late one for Ali McCann you know another night might have won the game yep again it was a it was a half chance at the end of the match you know came at him very quickly and he could control it and fortunately put it past the post peacock farrell is injured george savile is injured should add that so that's why he's not involved today cypress throw on the halfway line there left header won by stephen davis to shea charles wearing number 20 the manchester city teenager yeah, he's uh, fouled by castanos yeah he wearing 20 for cypress he invited the the, the foul but <laughs> it is a windy day john o'neill's <laughs> notes are heading everywhere. for a burden but eventually. i mean his, his control invites the foul it's, it's good play by him. <laughs> good job you've got your mickey mouse uh, <laughs> your mickey mouse clipboard that's keeping all those notes together john Cyprus have won the ball back, Castanos. John's having a little moment here. That's a, a foul on Castanos. The referee is from all the match officials. It's uh, <laughs> Parker from oh, Spain. They've gone now, Michael. I just have to do it by memory. Somebody down the stand there might get a Our referee something. is Ricardo de Burgos uh, uh, Bengochea. To give us full name, we'll call him Ricardo the ref from Spain. <laughs> and uh, it's Gogic playing the ball across the defensive line of Cyprus in their white shirts and blue shorts. Spread the ball to this near side. Uh, Taniotto has lost out. Here comes Ballard charging forward. Ballard edge of the area. Opportunity now for McNair inside the penalty area. He's taken down. Is that a penalty? Was that a foul by Gogic? Knows as the referee. I think he's pointing to the sky, so I presume Barr's going to have a look at it. I'm not so sure myself on first seeing it, Michael, but it was a great ball by Ballard. He's, he's won the ball on the halfway line. Strode to the edge in yard box. Played Paddy McNair three. I think it got caught a little bit behind him. I don't think we are going to have a look at it. Are they not? Been and gone. Play continues oh, in Northern Ireland. I think it was definitely worth a look anyway. Keep an eye on the screen there, John, for a replay. It's Stephen Davis, 100th competitive cap tonight, 138th overall. Again, Northern Ireland have lost possession, but a strong header by Ballard has made a very tidy start to this game. The opening nine minutes, Northern Ireland nil, Cypress nil. It's high in the sky, and um, number 14, Kikoulis, has come off worse, but Cypress have the ball inside the centre circle. There's room on this left-hand side instead of which they go you know, to Kikoulis inside the centre circle. They're crisp passing, you know, they, this, this team can pass the ball. They're ranked 105th in the FIFA rankings. Northern Ireland at the start of this Nations League campaign for, were 54th. That is obviously going to change after uh, two defeats and a, and a goalless draw in Larnaca. 
spread that ball to the right hand side to Cyprus that's nice stuff they stay onside they're two in the area waiting for a cross that's a curling away cross in the wind it's taken a bit of a turn for the, the chillier now the sun is going in I think we're about to see more rain uh, Shane Lavery does well doing a throw in deep inside his own half yeah a great piece of play by the Cypriots uh, you know the cross into the box was too too far and uh, Lavery's doing his job there he's he's tracked back and uh you know, force the the surplus to put it out for a throw in. But again, I think it just that that little piece of play just shows that if we give them time and space, Michael, they will pass the ball and uh, cause us problems. Six years ago, we were slightly warmer in the Stade de Nice, the opening European Championship game for Northern Ireland 2016. That one nil defeat against Poland. It's funny, Michael. We haven't seen a replay of that incident at all. Now. So I still don't know what the we don't know how close it was yep. or, or what. And that was the first talking point, whether it should have been a penalty. It was great play by Ballard, and you've got to say, you know, since he's come into the team, he's been an absolute star. Long ball forward by Brown. No offside flag up against McMenamin. Can he keep it in by the left-hand corner flag? Yes, he can. Three green shirts in the area. Here comes the cross. Lafferty's missed the header. And it might bounce into the waiting path of Stephen Davis. Does very well to keep the ball alive. It's back out to the left-hand side. Cross in once more. Looking for Kyle Lafferty. He's winning uh, cap number 89 tonight. Yeah, There's was a, the rain. You can hear it on the roof. That was a great cross by McMenemy. It just was just evaded Lafferty. It's just a little bit too high for him. But the good thing there, we had Lafferty, McNair and uh, Lavery all in the box. Here's the cross from Brody Spencer. It takes a deflection off the defender. And it's, the wind is buffeting all over the place. And the rain is back on. Just uh, five minutes after lovely sunshine, we're getting the proverbial four seasons in one day. And it's turned very nasty. <laughs> McNair gets the ball back to Brody Spencer wearing number 21, pokes it in, here's Shea Charles gets to the byline, two at the back post chips to the back, header comes in and it hasn't been directed goalwards by McMenamin but a great run by Shea Charles a great play by Spencer and by Charles and unfortunately McMenamin, the, the defender did brilliant at the back post Michael. there's a separate player down but the Spanish referee let's play continues, okay. Charles has found Brody Spencer linking up nicely the new oh. boys Cross to the back post is going to be picked up by Connor McMenamin. McMenamin gets to the byline. His attempted cross is blocked. Brown tries to get on the end of it, but Cyprus just smashed that upfield. Looking for Kikoulis, but the header's won by Ballard. And Northern Ireland have started well in the opening 12 minutes. Yeah, the 12 minutes have gone. It's a totally different team. Spencer on this right-hand side, although he was maybe at fault with a goal in, in Kosovo. Going forward, I thought he played well the other night. And he started that way again tonight. Ballard this afternoon. to Brody Spencer stabs it into the path of Paddy McNair wins the header out comes the goalkeeper he's been challenged by Shane Lavery the home fans again asking for a penalty I think if anything it might have been Lavery on the keeper who is asking for treatment yeah the keeper in the centre half got him got mixed up there one left it to the other and eventually the keeper made the attempt to get the ball Lafferty's tried to come in behind him I think he's got on his back a little bit uh, I, I do think it was a foul more on the keeper than the other way around and the last time Northern Ireland beat Cyprus in Belfast, John, April 1971, George, George Best, Best Patrick had a five in it. Yeah. Who was the manager? Billy Bingham. Billy Bingham, yeah. Coming towards the end of his first spell in charge. And um, three successive nil-nil draws in the last three meetings, stretching back 20 years. Well, they haven't been classics, I think. They haven't called. been classics. <laughs> and, and to be fair, Northern Ireland could easily have lost a couple of those games, could have lost in Larnaca last weekend Catalaris uh, going closest Ali McCann nearly nabbing it at the end for Northern Ireland the options on the bench Southwood and Clark the two goalkeepers Bradley Lane Charlie McCann we're just uh, seeing it again now Michael here if you just want to have a little look at it McNair gets the ball into the box no oh, he's dived I think he's dived there was what do contact you think? there John there was a bit of contact but wow. I'll go with a defender being an old defender of course you would yeah, possibly contact, and, and as soon as he feeds it, I think Paddy's gone down. But if I'd have been in that situation, I'd have been a little bit hard done by it. I'd have given a penalty. The rest of the subs are McGinty on Charles McCallum, Thompson, White, Donnelly, and Ali McCann. The rain has stopped, but it's still a little bit grey. The lights are on here at the National Stadium. We play 14 minutes, Northern Ireland nil, Cyprus nil. Northern Ireland having the better of the opening exchanges. Cyprus are getting caught nearly in defence. Yeah, and you've got to credit Kyle Lafferty. He's doing a lot of work there, trying to close the, you know, the back three down. Does all the running, and eventually it comes out to the left back here, and uh, Lafferty forces it yes, out two. for a throw in, just you know, about maybe 20 yards. The two L men up front, Lafferty and Lafferty, the big man, the little man. 
And Cyprus at the minute are having difficulty getting out of their own half. Header has been won by Ballard. It's back with Johnny Evans on the right-hand side. Chips it high, looking for Lafferty to win it in the air. The defender nods it away. Picked up by Paddy McNair on the right-hand side. McNair um, oh, he's unlucky. nearly found Brody Spencer, but it's play on this near side. And um, we can see the Cyprus manager. 15 minutes gone, Michael. And this is a totally different Northern Ireland side. And I think, you know, the, the fact that McNair is in midfield, that we've got his industry up and down, and we've got Charles in there, he's picking lovely passes, makes a bit, big difference. Nikos Kostanoglu in a sort of beige suit. Oh, well Tommy played. Johnson's the man out on the technical area for Northern Ireland. Cyprus do well to work it out uh, to Kiriakou. And now there's room on the right hand side for Pitas. We saw a lot of the ball last Sunday. Pitas gets the cross inside, footed away by Johnny Evans. Oh, and uh, it's a crunching good. challenge uh, coming in on the far side. And Connor McMenamin, as he was toe poking the ball away. I think it was Artie Mattis, he just got in there a little bit too late and he's actually hurt himself. He has hurt himself. He had been, he had been skipper, but he seems to have handed over the uh, armband now to Christoffi. The centre forward. The Cypress are back to their 10 fit outfield players. Costa Noglu coming out the edge of his technical area to make some very expressive gestures. And it's Ballard over the halfway line for Northern Ireland. On the right-hand side, Brody Spencer side foots it nearly into the path of McNair. It's nodded out of play by Tanayotu. Yeah, again, you look at McNair in midfield, you know, he's further up the field than I think any of our midfield players were in the last three games. Tonight in uh, C2, in uh, Volos, it's Greece against Kosovo, meeting of the top two. And then the end of September, the group will conclude with Northern Ireland, Kosovo and Cyprus, Greece on the 24th of September. And uh, Northern Ireland away to Greece on the last day of the group, 27th, Kosovo home to Cyprus. Northern Ireland, of course, looking for their first win in the Nations League. Stabbed forward by Brody Spencer, headed away by Gogic. It uh, bounces off the, uh, look, it bounces off the hand of Shea Charles. He couldn't find McMenamin on that far right-hand side. And Cyprus uh, with a very distinctive Gogic, the man with Scottish league experience. He's been well tackled on that far side by Kyle Lafferty. And yeah, from a again, from making a it difficult for yeah, Cyprus to get from a defensive of point of view, half. yeah, they won't let them play. Lafferty in particular closing down their back three, making it very difficult for them. Is this it? I won't, I won't say it. No, don't say We're it. We're not going to see George Savile score, put it that way. <laughs> we might see Kyle score. Well, Cyprus. he was very close to that cross that McMenamin put in. So, you know, if, if he keeps getting the service, Lafferty will score. To be fair to him, he hasn't had much service in the previous games. Terrible ball by the Cypriots. Sliced it out of play on this near side. Ballard back to uh, Trevor Carson. He's now playing his football, or will be playing his football next season, all being well for St Mirren. Uh, spent a long period on loan at Morecambe last season from Dundee United, but now at the age of 34. A man who's had some awful injury problems in the last decade. But uh, let's hope he will stay fit and have a decent season for the Saints. Long ball played by Northern Ireland out to that left-hand side, picked up by McMenamin. McMenamin taking on Pitas, and he's won the corner. Yeah, keep giving him the ball. You know, he's tried to take the, the fullback on. The fullback's had to give away the corner. And, of course, Conor McMenamin knows all about Windsor Park. Started his Irish League career here with Linfield. I haven't seen a lot of him, Michael, to be honest. But, you know, I think he's... Star performer for Glentoran. The yeah. season just gone. Here comes the... He doesn't look out of pieces. place. Hasn't been great. But McNair is back to take this corner on the left-hand side. Brown is up. Lafferty, obviously, is up. Evans, too. Here it comes from McNair from the left-hand side. Ballard! Wins the header, but puts it well wide. Yeah, again, good cross. I still think it's just maybe a little bit too far, uh, but Ballard gets on the end of it, but the uh, the centre forward, I think that time it was Christoffi, uh, you know, just does enough that he doesn't get a clean header on it because over the bar. We played 19 minutes, 0-0, nil -nil, Northern Ireland Cyprus. And the last one of this four Nations League game. Uh, yeah, we've won it again, it's good In play. 11 days, group of matches Northern Ireland have won the ball back well Cyprus. yeah we're winning it in their half you know it's just great play Ballard on a little run that's uh, not a great ball though for Brody Spencer but he'll try and keep it in but he, it's all in vain that's yeah. uh, get it out of play by uh, Paniotto he's well up the for park kick. Ballard you know he's about 15-20 yards inside the, the Cyprus half but unfortunately you know he's tried to play with the outside of his foot and just a little bit too much on it Cyprus have never won a Nations League away game they've won a, a couple of matches uh, in the past at home their last away win was against Kazakhstan in October 
2019. And of course, they've yet to score a goal in this group, C2, after losing to Kosovo 2-0. The goal was drawn in Larnaca with Northern Ireland, and then they lost in Greece on Thursday, 3-0. Header won by Shea Charles. It's all Northern Ireland at the moment. Forward by Brown on the left-hand side. And um, Menemann brings his man down. That'll be a free kick. The referee from Spain is in uh, a light turquoise blue. And that'll be a free kick to Cyprus on their right-hand side. Gogic to his defensive partner, Laifis, one of the uh, experienced men coming into this squad. Big tall fella. Yeah, they're still, you know, they want to try and play, but they keep kicking Kiriak it away. Kiriak giving the ball away to McMenamin, who's gone on a run. He slipped the ball past one defender, he slipped it past two. Was he being held back? The home fans certainly seem to think so. He was in the first attempt. He should have given the free kick there. He's let he play go down, on. John. Yeah, he should have done, yeah. Brown wins the ball back for Northern Ireland. Oh, That's first a poor touch first touch Mookie, by yeah. McMenamin on that far side. It came at him very quickly, and I thought um, uh, it took by surprise. Put it down that right-hand channel. It's running right, <laughs> right, running right along the line. Didn't go out. And it's uh, been picked up and tidy up by Johnny Evans and out of play on that far side for Northern Ireland throws. As I look around, difficult to see any empty seats. I think it's pretty much a full house here. Yeah, it looks like it. And the sun is, well, it's not back out, but it's brighter than it was 10 minutes ago. And Northern Ireland have a throw and it'll be taken by uh, Kieran Brown winning his 12th cap tonight for the senior side. Uh, McMenamin's lost possession. Yeah, it just got too close to the throw in at the time and there's no room to move. Steep learning curve coming from the... Danske Bank Premiership in senior football. He hasn't been involved at all in underage size. Kieran Brown wins the header. Davis to Charles. And that's one back inside the centre circle by Atsionis. Yeah, on the other side of the last few minutes have been able to get it on the ball and do anything with it. You know, it's a touch and two for us and then we're giving it to them and then they, you know, do exactly the same and give it back to us. In the last running of the Nations League, Cyprus survived a relegation playoff. They beat uh, Estonia 2-0 over two legs. Headers one back into the path of Shane Lavery now. He's going to run on the right-hand side. The ball played, though, behind Paddy McNair, and Gogic comes away with it. Yeah, McNair was looking for the ball in behind to try and run onto it, and, uh, and I think Lavery was trying to play it to feet and get a 1-2, and they just sort of got... Uh, they weren't really on the same page. Coming up to the end of the first quarter of this match, National Stadium at Windsor Park. Northern Ireland nil, Cyprus nil. Um, all the possession, all the attacking's been done by the men in green without really forcing the new goalkeeper Krista Dolo to make a, a save at all worthy of the name now. McMenamin on the left-hand side, wearing 13, the jersey so normally filled by Corey Evans, one of the many absentees from this uh, group of four Nations League games. And here's Ballard, who so enjoyed his second international goal uh, in Pristina at the weekend, but Northern Ireland have lost the ball. On the halfway line, it's uh, Castanos, the big fella, spreads it out to his left-hand side. Kakulas though, been well marshalled by Ballard, yep. and it's out of play for a throw-in. Good defending by Ballard. The ball he's had in, he's hit into Steve Davis, just had a little bit too much pace on it. Davis tried a little back heel to put Lavery and Lavery in, and just didn't come off. Tanayoto will take the throw-in, a sort of 15 yards from the corner flag. Chested down by Kakulas, side foot back into the path, but well headed away by Brody Spencer, only as far as Kiriakou. There might be a shot coming in from Artie Mattis, but immediately Stephen Davis gets in front of him. And here come the Cypriots on the left-hand side. This is the tidy work, Paniotu. Can it get uh, back from Etzionis? Paniotu with a cross chance, and it's oh, missed at the near post. That was a big opportunity for Cyprus. The yeah. fella at the near post was uh, Christofi, and he missed it completely. Yeah, that was the best chance. So a let-off for Northern Ireland in the 24th minute. Well-worked yep. move on the left. We saw it from the first game, Michael. They can pass the ball around, and if you give them the table room, we're giving them now again. And here they come once more, Cyprus. And a chance, Neo, good, important interception by Ballard, and the long-range shot from outside the area is blocked once more. But again, Christophe had made the run, and the ball got to him. He was in on the goalkeeper, Lavery. This game is opening up. They spread it out to that left-hand well, side where Lavery was offside. Play he's, he's is play continuing on. Yeah, he's just playing because on because the Cypriots have got the ball definitely offside yes, that but was that was a scare Michael I mean you know you wonder how he actually missed it it was a great ball across the box and, and, and again we were mentioning it the other night against Kosovo when the centre forward comes off our back three sometimes we let him come in and he has all the time in the room to play and, and it came off Ballard I would love to see Ballard just tracking him back in there that was a let off for the home side 25 minutes gone, nil-nil. 
it's pace is now slowed yeah they're getting the ball at the back and passing it about and trying to slow the game down a little bit and uh, by doing so you know they're coming into the game and on the left hand side oh, Billy Asso so lucky. Oh, so lucky Meg not Meg Shane Lavery they're building once more on the left ball in field is well cut out by Johnny Evans now looking at the long chip forward for Kyle Lafferty running Lafferty to that left hand corner he has support from McMenamin Shea Charles is also there Lafferty's done well oh by dear me dreadful ball given away to Kakoulis and the momentum is back with the Cypriots all in white side footed ball into the path of uh, Tunis left edge of the area up against Brody Spencer Tunis waiting for support he's got it in uh, the form of Kiriak whose attempted shot was a mile wide from outside the area yeah again another little warning I mean Lafty does all the, the hard work you know wins the ball holds it up and then just passes it straight to a white shirt under no pressure whatsoever and we've broken very quickly to try and support him and get caught on the counter attack suddenly the good start is dissipating yeah, a wee bit now Cyprus yeah, coming back into the game yeah we're not getting the ball into Charles we're not getting the ball into, into McNair and getting him on the, on the, on the ball again but these are no slouches when it comes to that, Michael. The problem is, is that you know they're not great when it gets to the 18-yard box, and that has saved us in the last couple of occasions. Not so long ago, we were holding Italy here, nil-nil. I were holding Cyprus, <laughs> nil-nil. Ball infield by uh, oh, Ballard. Nice flick by Lavery into the path of McNair. McNair in on goal, gets the shot well blocked by Gogic, and that was a lovely little flick on by Shane Lavery to create the chance for Paddy McNair. Yeah, you know, it begs the question: Why has McNair not been playing, or why is it taking this long to get him into midfield? You know, we have players at the back. He didn't need to be playing centre half. He's lost the ball uh, from the throw given to him from uh, Brody Spencer, and Cyprus have it inside their own half. Kiriakou. That's, a, that's as there. wild and it is blustery down there yeah, but that's as wild a pass there's, there's as a no shot was for that. a minute ago yeah we need to get on the ball again and get back at the you know threatening the back the back three there Johnny Evans on the halfway line Brody Spencer asking for it on the right that's with Ballard cap 16 for him two international goals second one came in Pristina on Sunday Evans with the ball forward looking for Lavery nodded away by the defender it might break for Stephen Davis who finds Spencer on this right hand side, tall figure looks like an athlete doesn't he Ballard, infield to Stephen Davis Lavery to Shea Charles on that occasion his pass wasn't an accurate one just cleared up field anywhere and suddenly Cypress have gone very deep again they have and if they do that and invite us on I think we've got enough quality there John O'Neill astonishingly was very optimistic an hour ago. Yeah, I said I, I won't no, tell you what score he suggested it might be because <laughs> in I an hour and a half time you might be laughing at him. Well, I just thought you know there has to be a reaction to you know the, the you're looking at Scotland um, Scotland's game in Dublin last year, thinking there was a reaction. From, there definitely was from the this from is the Davis Republic. spreading it to the right hand side. McNair four green shirts in the area. McNair right hand side outside the penalty area. Spencer on side. Yes, he is. Tries to chip it into the area. It's deflected away to Stephen Davis. Still the attack is on for Northern Ireland. Davis finds Spencer back out to Ballard they're asking for it at the back post Ballard infield to Shea Charles Charles now to Stephen Davis on the right hand side didn't have a great night in Pristina on Sunday separate foot is in and they volley it away yeah there's a great little passage of play there but the ball's gone in the dispenser he's got to be stronger there and hold off the challenge from the defender and, and, and keep this move going now we're back on the halfway line again Cyprus have got all their white shirts behind the ball this is Lavery on the right hand side taking on the defender is he going to try and get to the byline he's got past one he squares it now McNair in and goal near post and uh, goes down under the challenge Lavery's done Taddy brilliant McNair again McNair can't believe he, and he neither got the decision nor a shot in at the near post his first touch was terrible and it's out of play for the goal kick yeah Lavery's done brilliant on the right hand side he's done the full back he gets to the, the cross in but again McNair's first touch I've got to say, I thought that was at least a corner. He was being challenged by uh, Paniatu and Ar Artematas. Mm, it's hard to say. His first touch let him down. You know, he gets a first touch and gets a strike away. You know, try and make the goalkeeper save it. But his first touch meant, you know, that it, it was always going away from him. A little discussion between Ian Barraclough and Tommy Johnson. Well, we've passed the ball more in these 30 minutes in this game than we did in the whole of the three games beforehand. The sun is back out. Looks like a lovely summer's day out there. We're in the shadows here at the back of the, uh, the south stand. As McNair loses the ball on the far side. And Cypress, white shirts, blue shorts. 
have it inside their own half. We've played half an hour. Half chances, really. Yeah, they've had the best chance of the game. Christophe missing his kick at the near post as the cross came in from the left-hand side, and there he is. Little back flick off the foot of Johnny Evans for a Cypress throw, far side there, right. You can see them slowing the game down now. They're taking an age to take this uh, this throw in, which is level of the 18-yard box over in the right-hand side. Restarting the day, nine points from the three matches, cost a vote. A win over Northern Ireland, give them six points. Northern Ireland Cyprus with one, one point each. Uh, Kieran Brown has been That's fine. not making brought his that. man down the far side. Johnny Evans inside his own penalty area, side-footed ball to Trevor Carson. He'll have to look lively. Clears upfield, right-footed, not a great one. Ball is back with Cyprus and Sionis. And on the halfway line, it's the big uh, central defender Lifeis. And here he is once more wearing. Uh, 19 didn't start the game in Larnaca. This is quick, tidy ball through the middle by Cyprus. A foul, cheap free kick conceded by Daniel Ballard in a central position on uh, Andronikos Kakoulis. Yeah, Kakoulis has good, good, quick feet. He's moved the ball quickly, and uh, Ballard just gets there a little bit too late. Game has just died a wee bit, John. Well, from our point of view, it has. They've slowed the game down. You know, when they get the ball, they're capable of keeping it in possession. Um, haven't done a lot with it outside of the one chance we were talking about earlier. But, uh, you know, the more they get on the ball, the more confident they become. And after the, the final two games of September, the draw of the European Championship qualifiers will take place in October. Northern Ireland, of course, hoping to, to reach the finals in Germany. But here's the free kick coming in from the left-hand side. It's a good uh, 30 yards out. Kiriakou standing over it. He played in right-footed. Flicked header in, and it's in! They've scored! It was a very simple move, and a header into the bottom corner, and Cyprus have taken the lead here at Windsor Park in the 32nd minute. It's Northern Ireland nil, Cyprus 1. Yeah, shocking defending. I mean, it's, it's just a straightforward free kick, and... Uh... You know, I don't know who is supposed to be picking him up, but there's a free header, and it's one of those ones that Carson can't really do anything. Kiriakou plays it in, the flicked header from yeah, Kakoulis. It looks, like, it looks like Charles was picking him up to start with and let him go. His it's a second great header. international goal, the occasion of his 10th cap, and Cyprus lead in Belfast. Just watching it again. Yeah, Charles doesn't get anywhere near him. Just that little flick. Carson can't do much about it. It's right inside his left-hand post. Now it's a test of character. They started not too badly, but you know, again the Cypriots had the two best chances of the game that they had the other night, and this time they so scored first on goal the second in the group. One. Yeah, they've never won an away game in the Nations League, and Northern Ireland looked stunned 12 minutes before half time. What can they do before the half time break? But forward by Ballard, uh, Davis wins the ball inside the Cypriot half and they've come away with it, the men on White Castanos and they're breaking once more. Good oh, challenge and a great challenge by Ballard. Ballard has, has taken a knock. It's broken for Stephen Davis. Davis in the central position is being urged to shoot. Squares the ball. McMenamin inside the penalty area up against Big Gogic who's done very well. That's he's brilliant. won the ball back and scoops it away and he's coughed up possession. Long range shot's going to come in from Lafferty. He's going to hit it straight at the keeper. A long way out, must be 25, 30 yards out. Didn't get a lot of power on it straight at the goalkeeper. A good break by Stephen Davis, but uh, again, McMahon just takes a little bit too long on the ball. And Goggies at centre half was very good, very strong. Takes it off him. It's 1 0 to Cyprus. The horrors of the Nations League continuing for Northern Ireland. They had made a, a tidy start in the opening 20 minutes. Cyprus had come back into it. They'd been threatening, created a good chance, and then scored from a very simple free kick played in by Kiriakou and nodded in with a flicked header by Andronikos Kakoulis. Just give it to Steve Davis. Spencer on the right-hand side. Infield to Davis, who's on the halfway line. Johnny Evans inside the centre circle, spreads it to the left-hand side, McMenamin gives it in feed to Kieran Brown. Brown, left-footed pass, looking for That's Spencer coming in, nodded away by the left-back, he's taking a bit of a clattering from Spencer, and that'll be a free kick, and I think a little bit of treatment, and you wouldn't be surprised at all if they wind the clock down yeah, they've got towards half-time. Half time. But, I mean, Kieran Brown's in, you know, in the left-back position on the halfway line, he's trying to hit a ball out to... 
to our right winger, you're never going to be able to do that. And as you know, the home fans standard. are stunned, John. They are stunned, and I'm stunned you as well. You can hear the silence. Yeah, to it's amazing. The bash mode. You know, but again, you know, if for some reason we have stopped playing through the midfield again, and we're looking for long balls from Johnny Evans and uh, and Ballard. And when we play it out wide, Michael, more often than not, we're coming back and going across the field again. It's all on the periphery. Whereas in the first five or ten minutes, you know, McNair was getting on the ball, Charles was getting on the ball, and we were being more direct and going, you know, straight towards the 18-yard box. Balls at the feet of Johnny Evans, present. To Kieran Brown, still deep in his own oh, half. That's a terrible, a terrible touch. He does well to win it back for Shea Charles, still inside the Northern Ireland half, away to our left. Uh, ten minutes left in the first half. Shane Lavery doesn't get past the uh, left back. Wins the throw. -in. We need to get back in this game quickly, Spencer. You would like to think maybe we can get something before half time. Johnny Evans still inside the centre circle, inside his own half. Out to Kieran Brown on the Northern Ireland left. Conor McMiniman, the again, defender in front of him. It's, it's it's easy football, easy passes here. Northern Ireland at the minute are having trouble getting through this ten man. White shirt of defence, I mean, long ball looking ball. for uh, Charles. And it's Schlavery now looking for the ball. It's back with uh, Ballard. Here's Davis. Davis goes a little run. He's beaten one, he's beaten two. The edge of the area, chips it to the back post, looking for McMenamin. And the defender gnaws it out for the corner. Yeah, great run by Stephen Davis. McMenamin has got to start quicker and get in there. You know, it's easy for the full back to make the header, but, you know, there's this ball's coming in at the back post, and McMenamin is five yards too far out. Eight minutes left in the first half. Paddy McNair, corner on the right hand side. Northern Ireland looking for an equaliser. His right arm goes up. Here it is, right footer and away, swinger. Uh, it might fall to Davis who hits it on oh, the volley tipped strike. over the top by Chris Dodolo. Yeah, it was a great strike by uh, Steve Davis from about 25 yards out. Goalkeeper straight at him. You know, it was an easy touch over the bar. Another a corner. Good strike. Again on the right-hand side, Paddy McNair with it. Brown is up. Lots of green jerseys inside waiting for the corner. Again, the defender wins it. Once more comes out to Stephen Davis. Doesn't hit it this time. Gives it back uh, to Spencer inside the centre circle. And that is a, a sort of nothing ball into the... Yeah, his first touch was to poor. To the feet again. of the goalkeeper. His first touch was poor, Michael. And, it, you know, lets it get away from him a little bit. You know, the forward closes him down and he has to hit it a little too quickly and it's gone straight through to the goalkeeper. Green White Army are in fine voice. Goalkeeper clears it over the halfway line for Cyprus. Another header won by Ballard, but it's out of play on this near side. Northern Ireland conceding in the 32nd minute a Kakulis header from a Kiriakou free kick. Uh, it's, it's disappointing when you lose goal goals from set pieces. And generally, you know, Northern Ireland don't do that. It was a soft one. Paniahu with the throw in on the Cyprus left. Ballard throws his man to the floor and chips it forward left footed. And nothing doing for Lafferty on the halfway line. The two number eights clashing and it's going to fall into the path of Brody Spencer. Now on the right hand side is Paddy McNair. A lot of finger pointing going on between Messers right and Magilton. Davis has won the ball back in the challenge on the halfway line. That's a fair one, says the Spanish referee in his blue jersey and black shorts. Northern Ireland in their green, in the sunshine. On this near side, there's a little strip in shadow as Ballard plays it forwards in the shadowy part now with Paddy McNair on the right hand side. This is Brody Spencer trying to slip it past the left back and is smashed out of play by Cyprus, whose manager Nikos Kostanoglu has been very demonstrative in his beige and brown suit. And he's watching now as Brody Spencer will take this through in six minutes left in the first half here at the National Stadium at Windsor Park, Northern Ireland trailing to Cyprus 1 0. Lafferty trying to win something, doesn't win anything down by the corner flags, put the ball out of play for a throw in John O'Neill. No, he's got absolutely is no making chance to his him, yeah. frustrated noises and sighs and I just think we picked the wrong pass at times. You know, I still think, you know, we've got it. It'd be interesting to hear what the likes of Jim in particular, you know, says at half time. If I was in the midfield player and they're ignoring me, but it's a different game now. You know, I would go spare at not getting the ball, but Charles and you know, I know he's only a young lad, but he seems to accept the fact that they bypass him. I mean, he's got to get on the ball and play. 
Cyprus have coughed up possession to Stephen Davis inside the Cyprus half to make there on the right hand side a telegraph for the library and out of play off the left back he's played very well in the opening uh, 40 minutes yeah they've defended well they've defended well given their due wind is getting up here at Windsor Park five minutes left in the first half Johnny Evans gives it out to Ballard on the right Kent Lafferty's seen very little of the ball hasn't he um Lavery's robbed of it but it's back with Ballard he's perhaps seen as much of the ball as anybody in yeah, green so done, far he's done well again there Ballard you back know, with Johnny Evans inside the centre circle blustery dry sunny day and that's a very nearly an excellent ball from Johnny Evans just with Miniman yeah, couldn't, I think it's a couldn't difficult prevent ball, it from maybe. going out of play down yeah, to the I think it's a flag. difficult ball it's a difficult ball trying to play wonder balls are they John? well that's what we're trying to do at the minute and we're ignoring the midfield and it's not coming off shake of the head by Ian Barraclough who's retreated uh, down below us from his technical area four and a half minutes of normal time left in the first half can't imagine there'll be too much additional time to be played Johnny Evans just oh, uh, with a dear, high foot dear. he's been penalised for the challenge just I inside thought he did the... brilliant there he's won the ball took it on his chest and you know he was quick into the tackle I mean there may have been minimal contact but I don't see that as a foul John, you have to say, in terms of, of 24 carat saves, Chris Adolo, the new man, has hardly no. been forced to do anything. No, he's, he's, he's had that tip over the bar from... Uh, that moment when McNair was threatening yeah. at the near post, the tip over from Stephen Davis, long-range shot, of it. which was comfortable for him. Now, Ballard has brought his man down, Kiriakou has died, surely. Yeah, he's got I mean, just been too strong for him. Referee's not buying it, the Spanish yeah. ref. Kiriakou is down. Separate medical team are wanting to come on. Don't put the ball out, just keep don't. playing. Keep the home fans ridiculous. don't think there's anything wrong no, with it. Absolutely Separate not. number eight. If the referee wants to stop the game, let him stop the game. Northern Ireland, all the right field players inside the Cyprus half, looking for this equaliser before half time. Shea Charles. Kiriakou's back on his feet. That's the <laughs> ironic cheers for him. McMenamin up against the fullback on the Northern Ireland left, gets it back to Kieran Brown. Four men in the area waiting for a cross. Shea Charles in. Here's a chance now. McMenamin in and goal. Good save for the keeper. And the attempted cross goes out for a goal kick. Goal kick, I think, yeah. I mean, what a ball from Charles again. <laughs> Football's a simple McMenamin's game. having words with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's been told to shut up and go away by Gogic. Um, McMenamin's been told to calm down by the referee. We're seeing the replay. I think McMenamin was appealing for the corner. His shot well, it was blocked by the defender no, and then was... came off the goalkeeper. No, I think it was definitely a goal kick. It was asking for a handball, was he, against it may the have team? Been. It may have been, but I don't think... Uh... Maybe worth a further look from the boys. Artie Matas was the defender. I think Castanos gets, gets mixed up in it for some reason. I don't know why. I think he's a fellow who likes to throw his weight around. He, he okay. sees a fair few yellow cards, Castanos, <laughs> midfield enforcer. But I mean the the ball from I mean the ball from Charles is brilliant again. You want to see him on the ball more, John? You want to see him on the ball? I mean, my my instructions would be to the back four, the back three. Every chance you get, give it to him. That's a foul on the far side. And foul then, on Lafferty. From his point of view, bring McManaman into the game as much as you possibly can on that side, and and Lavery on on this side into the final two minutes still waiting for the board to go up an opportunity for Paddy McNair to deliver the ball a couple of yards in from the left hand touchline so we have once more Ballard up we've got uh, McMenamin we've Kieran Brown there as well just outside the 18 yard box he plays it short to Stephen Davis is this going to be a pre-arranged move chips it now to Johnny Evans and that was terrible inside of play for a goal kick the, the well, free kicks have not been clever you can see what over this last 11 do, days but I think you know sometimes it, it, it's 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 very complicated I think the ball was too far out on the touchline there they were holding a high line you know well outside the 18 yard box I think you got to move the ball I don't think just hitting it straight in there was going to get us any joy but to me the ball came in to Davis from McMenamin from the free kick you know, Evans makes the move, but the ball for me was straight back out to, to, to McMenamin again. Let him go. Here by the goalkeeper in the last minute of normal time. Header won by Stephen Davis. Chested down by Lafferty. Swung back by the men on white inside their own half on their right-hand side. Christophe 
We'll leave it to Kiriakou, who gets it forward. It's scrappy stuff, but it, it's effective at the minute. They're getting it up the pitch meter by meter. And here's the goal scorer. Kakoulis is going to hit one, and that's uh, well over the bar. Yeah, it was a poor header from Brown. You know, he doesn't get any distance of it at all. He's actually headed back into the centre of the, the field, and uh, Kakoulis just couldn't get that ball down at all and blended it over the bar. Wind is picking up once more. It's still dry. It's a cloudy sky. And should the scoreline remain the same, the clouds are going to gather once more over Ian Barraclough. He'd hoped for 12 points from this four group of uh, this group of four matches. And the minute Northern Ireland oh, are looking at one kill there. Ballard was lucky to get that ball back from a, a poor pass. Carson and Johnny Evans, the two options for him. As the board is about to go up. I suspect, yeah, one, one minute would have been my guess. Long ball four for Lavery. Can't get in the end of it inside the penalty area. Bounces out for the goal kick. Yeah, again, it's not a bad effort, but it's a 40-yard ball. You know, we're trying to get him in on one ball. And that has to be absolutely pinpoint. We will uh, have a news bullet in the half time. We'll get the thoughts of Jim Magilton and Tommy Wright with Joel. And we hope for better things in the second half. Yeah, well, we started off reasonably well. First 10 or 15 minutes, things were going well. They get back into the game. You know, the scares with the first chance. You know, give away a soft goal. And, uh, you know, it's only in the last 10 minutes in this half we've started to come back into it again. We get the thoughts of the boys. Gogic is challenging McNair early on. It's nodded back by the Cypriot defence over the head by Laiafis. And there's the blast of the whistle from the Spanish referee. And that's what the home fans think. 1 0 down to Cyprus at home, John. It's disappointing. It really is disappointing. Um, I just don't understand, you know, the way we're playing here. I mean, just in that last little piece of play, Steve Davis has come back into the back four and got picked up the ball, Michael, and he's passing it to Johnny Evans and Ballard, who are in front of him. To me, it should be the other way around. Right? The centre half should be playing to the midfield. And again, when we, when we get Charles on the ball, you know, we see things from him, he's exciting, but we just don't get him on the ball enough. It's a bit like, I mean, we sat and predicted Greece were going to score here yeah. many days ago, it was 10, 11 days ago, and that was not a surprise. And Cyprus, without doing anything spectacular, were suddenly passing the ball and moving forward quite easily yeah. in the North Island half, and they score from a set piece. And that's surprising when you consider that, you know, our defence has been the strong point of the team down through the years, and we were very, very like a days ago on the, on the, on the, uh, the free kick for the goal. <laughs> it is so frustrating here at the minute. That, you know, it really is frustrating. It's hard to know, you know, why we're not performing at this level. And John, on the day we're remembering Billy Bingham, yeah. I mean, the team that you played in was so strong here at Windsor Park. It was our two defeats in the opening seven years of Bingham's second reign as manager. Hard to beat here at the minute. The only difference I can say from from my point of view is that when we went out on the park. From early on in Billy's teams, they knew exactly what we wanted to do and what the way we wanted to play. Sometimes I'm not sure if the players know what what's in, what was expected of them. And that can be very difficult and very confusing. And if that's the case, you know, the likes of McMenamin and Charles, you know, and the young lads that are coming into the side, it's very, very difficult for them. You know, if, if you're not coming into a side that's got a, a way that you want to play, and uh, it shows we're really patchy. You know, first 15 minutes, good. We go to sleep for 15 minutes and lose one goal, you know, possibly two, and then come back at it again. There's no consistency right throughout the team at the minute. Cyprus haven't had a lot to do to get this 1-0 uh, lead. We'll hear the thoughts of Messrs. Machilton and Wright. Um, it's got to improve in the second half here in the National Stadium at Windsor Park at halftime in Nations League Group C2. It's North Ireland 0, Cyprus 1. Sports Sound International Football with Joel Taggart. Yes, Northern Ireland staring defeat in the face uh, at home to Cyprus. Not only that, but also potential relegation from uh, League C2. And, um, you know, we'll go to playoffs and all that kind of stuff at the end. But, the, I mean, the prospect of dropping into League D, it, it doesn't really bear thinking about. Reminder, this is a Cyprus team that has won three times away from home in the last 32 attempts. Those wins against Kazakhstan, San Marino and Gibraltar. Uh, they lead 1-0 in Belfast at halftime. We get the thoughts of Jim and Tommy in a moment or two, but uh, for those of you who have been patiently waiting, apologies belatedly. It's the latest BBC News. BBC News NI. 
on Radio Ulster and on BBC Sounds. I'm Naomi Holland. Good afternoon. The family of a British soldier say he's been shot and killed in the eastern Ukrainian city of Severodonetsk. Jordan Gatley's relatives say he left the British army in March to fight with Ukrainian troops. The Secretary of State has said Conservative legislation to override parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol will not break international law. Brandon Lewis said he expects the DUP to form an executive after the legislation is published tomorrow because it resolves their concerns over the Brexit agreement. If the DUP are true to what they have said is the reason they withdrew the First Minister in the first place around wanting to see positive progress on fixing the problems of the protocol, this legislation will do that and I hope they'll respect that and deliver on that. But this is about the UK government. DUP are not part of of the UK government, we are putting forward legislation that fixes the problem for everybody in Northern Ireland. Police in Dungannon have arrested three men after a war memorial was damaged in Moy. Two of the men, aged 20 and 19, were detained on a number of charges, including criminal damage. The third, aged 20, was arrested on suspicion of attempted criminal damage. The Competition and Markets Authority has said it will investigate whether cuts to fuel duty are being passed on to drivers. The Business Secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, wrote to the regulator asking it to look into concerns that customers weren't getting what he called a fair deal at the pumps. And queues have formed outside the first of the former McDonald's restaurants in Russia to reopen since the US-based firm pulled out because of the invasion of Ukraine. Hundreds of customers gathered outside the renamed outlet in Moscow, which translates as tasty and that's it. And the weather, a mostly cloudy day with scattered showers pushing in from the west, some of them heavy in places. It'll be breezy with temperatures around 14 to 17 degrees. BBC News. We know our place. It's on winners' podiums, hitting aces on centre court, breaking record after record. We know our place. It's smashing sixes on millions of screens across the nation. There's a feeling that this match will be felt for generations to come. It's on pitches in sold out stadiums. Women in sport. Yep, we know our place. It's everywhere. This is our BBC. Sports Sign International Football with Joel Taggart. So welcome back to the National Stadium at Windsor Park where the halftime score is Northern Ireland nil, Cyprus 1. Uh, quite a task to keep Jim Magildan and Tommy Wright as quiet as we've been able to do for... The, the entire first half and we, we didn't get to hear from them before the game uh, that should be the way forward so we, it's the only way we can shut you two up um, come on or right at kick off time um, Jim what did you make of that I mean the first 10-15 minutes we're all thinking this is brilliant this is a real change and then all of a sudden the, the wheels have come off a bit haven't they they have a little bit yeah started brightly you know we all were crying out the campaign to get Paddy back in the midfield uh, was a successful one and he was marauding from midfield he was making intelligent runs into the box uh, Shea Charles, Stevie Davis were dominating things in midfield. Very, very bright. John made the comments about what has happened with me. I think you do it once or twice, and then you take the ball off the centre half. You, you let him have maybe one or two, but then it's demands on the centre half. It doesn't happen again because they're not really pressing. So, you know, we, we have not... So you tell him as the midfielder. Oh, 100%. You give it to me. 100%. And if it, it kicks it over my head again, in no, in no uncertain terms, not to do it again. Because if... And again, if it's the way we want to play and we want to go through the thirds, then central midfield players have to take the ball. And it's fine that you have another central midfield player who is making the box. That's grand. Yeah, because there's no point in having Shea charge in that midfield if he's going to spend 20 minutes in the middle of the half watching the ball get over his head. Strengths. Passing the ball, that's his strength. His greatest strength is passing the ball. He doesn't want to be chasing it. This is Cyprus at home. We should be dominating the ball. And we saw it, Tommy, you know, when he, they, they got him in a good position on the ball and he nearly puts McMenamin in right on the stroke at half time. Yeah, he's been, he's been excellent. He was excellent when he came on, um, you know, and, and you know what he's done already in this, in this campaign. Really good in the ball, intelligent, good way to pass. Um, you know, and, and McMenamin's caused a few problems down that left hand side. So, where did you, we lose our way, Tommy? We, 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 well, we lost our way a little bit on, on, on turnover of the ball and, and Cyprus were good at uh, breaking on the counter-attack and we lost our way, we give away a poor goal again, let's be honest, at this level and, you know, Shea Charles has done well but it, it's his man that scores a goal and, and 
in a way you can sort of defend that because he's a young and experienced player the the Cypriot players shouldn't get across him there at that near post and they get a goal from a set play which um, you know we sh it, it shouldn't happen at this level but I think you know Jim's right I think we've been more positive I think the system looks better than, than playing the three um, you know getting Paddy in there and, 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 and getting runs into the box I would just like to see Kyle um, up front either not come too short or, or spin in a couple of times because he's just coming short all the time for it and, and that ball down in behind and down in the channel is a good ball for us to get success off but it has been encouraging it has been uh, better but ultimately we're 1-0 behind to a team that's you know ranked 100 what, 105 and, and the other the yeah, uh, and the other reason about him that Joel is like you you know your four games the first three games haven't been great so confidence is ebbing away from players you know at the end of the day this is where the character of the side has to come out you have to show courage and then cur courage comes in many different forms it's the one you see where you're winning headers and you're winning packers but it's this mental character of being able to take the ball in, in situations where you know, we might be looking over your shoulder, Tommy, at times, yeah. and we've been and, and there. And make the right decisions. And make the right decisions. And for 20 minutes, and the little spell towards the end, we were we were positive. But then the goal affects that, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. The goal now has had, the, obviously, the opposite effect on, on maybe the mentality and temperament. Oh, no, of, not again. Not again. And if you're in the midst of a four-game, yeah. you know, end the season, you know, um, and important games, international football. But it's not even moment. that, Jim. You're in the longer run of two wins in the last 16 competitive internationals. There you go. So that ebbs away at you. That plays on your mind. There's no question about that. But this is where courage has to come into it. Like Shea Charge, it, hopefully it will not affect him. You know, when you see his pass to McManaman, McManaman, you know, he's unlucky, probably should score. But it's, you know, it's not going to affect... At least he's worked the goalkeeper. Yeah. Totally. I don't think the, the you know I don't think the likes of Shea Charles will be affected. I think no. he'll just want to play. Um, um, but I mean, they, we have to build on the what was you know encouraging in that first half, and and at the times we have went long. You know, John's right to say that in his commentary. But w what we've done when we went long was better than in, in recent games. Is we've won second ball, yeah, but even and then and then we've right. tried to play again. Yeah. But I think with the players that we've got and the team that we're playing against, we can have more of a bit of courage and try and play through the thirds yeah and and i do i do think we'll get you i mean the, the first 15 minutes we got um we got spencer around down the sides you know three yeah. or four times some great crosses coming in nobody getting on the end of it but to be fair you then, even better. even in that good spell tommy you nudged me and said after about 25 minutes or half an hour we haven't had a shot in yeah. target yet yeah well, the keeper hasn't been worked but, but tommy that's could have been right. between yeah. the post for cyprus <laughs> 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 we would have been they, they, they would have been safe and and that's the point is that we're one nil down mm -hmm. and we're saying right well let's come out and hopefully get some of the second half in the last nine internationals here at Windsor Park yeah Northern Ireland have scored four goals and two of those were own goals yeah so the big question is where's the goal coming from yeah 100% the facts don't lie I Tommy and I were talking during a game where I think Kyle, Kyle has stopped running in behind now that may be because of a lack of service so it's not all I'm not saying it's all his fault but for us I and mean, sitting watching you thinking Pace, maybe a little bit more pace, maybe a Gavin White coming on. Shane Lavery through the middle, right, where he wants to run in behind. He he doesn't really, he's not comfortable coming to feet. I just think we need an injection of pace and maybe, you know, start spinning in behind and really causing problems. Now we've got Pally in midfield. The next key, the next um, fight we're going to have is want uh, Shane to play through the middle. Yes. Because he's not as effective. It, it, uh, it, it does wide? It, no, wide no. Right. it doesn't it doesn't suit he'll do a job for you uh he'll give you a, a, a five six out of ten but it, he's, he's not a fact of it's no. not as it's not what, as good Devin, as good White, Devin White went across the water yeah. as a winger yeah yes. but what 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 Shane Lavery will do he'll run in behind he'll give you so as a midfield player forward run forward pass he isn't coming to feet and you're telling him you're not coming to feet you're just going to spin him and, and he also but, has somebody now in midfield that can play that yeah. pass yes. but then that stretch is Cyprus and and, were, and then you get more space to play in, in right. front of them as well. So it's it's um, you know I, I don't think he's going to make any changes at halftime. Doesn't look like it. But I'd like to see Gavin White come on um, and have I mean uh, Gavin White, Lavery and McMenamin yeah. all with pace up front. And I think that really would, you know would hurt Cyprus. The Cypriot coach has a clipboard of his own. It's not a Mickey Mouse one, John. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. It the is Cypriot... John. That is John. <laughs> maybe that's why the Cypriot <laughs> manager's notes aren't blowing away in John's hour. Um, so maybe maybe an own goals the way forward here, Jim. Three of Northern Ireland's last six goals here have been own goals. Yeah. So uh, maybe one of the Cypriots will show some mercy. 
uh, and give us something. But I mean, the, 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 the issue yeah. here is, is you know, re relegation. We, we, we started in League B, didn't we? We were yeah. relegated to League C. If we lose this, we've only two games left. One yeah. of those is away to Greece. Yeah. Um, and, you know, on the head to head, it would mean that Cyprus would be three points ahead of us. So we, we could be playing this relegation playoff with, I don't know, who it's knows, D D Joel, it Disneyland, isn't. Paris, and, but, and, and the Vatican or somewhere. <laughs> a, I don't know. It's a massive half time for the manager and staff. You know, he, he, he has to find some sort of words, right? Mm -hmm. or, or maybe actions that really get it into these lads' head that this is a massive 45 Give the minutes. ball to Shea Charles. That's get, the first get, thing you say. Get your midfield player on the ball. Get your best pass to the ball. Get him on the ball, right? And then, But he needs movement. And a lot of it is a bit static. And on the break, they, they, I mean, they, they haven't been br brutally bad, no, Tom. I mean, they, they, they created John, a couple of really, really yeah, good chances. There's a little bit of pace. And as John said in the commentary, they're, they're very good technically. And, uh, you know, they're comfortable on the ball and, and, and they want to play. But I, I do feel that it's a game that we can get back into. Yeah. And Jim's right. You know, managers, coaches, whatever you want to put a label on them, they, you know, they always say, oh, once the game starts, there's not a lot you can do. Well, I, I think I think there is. But that 15 minutes at half time is so important. Yeah. And it's important, actually, I, I do think today, to, to reiterate, there are, there are some positives today. Whereas maybe in other games that, you know, um, I don't think there has been. I agree. I think I they're agree. about to make a, uh, a substitution here, the uh, the Cypriots. So uh, we'll find out what that is. At least one change anyway. Um, half time, Northern Ireland trailing to Cyprus, who have won six of their last 60, 6-0 six matches away from home. It is a massive second 45 minutes for Ian Barraclough and his players, John O'Neill and Michael McNamee. Change in the Cypriot lineup, no change to the Northern Ireland 11. Uh, Andreas uh, Paniotu, I've no idea if he's related to the other Paniotu. He is on and he has replaced uh, Jonas Pitas, who uh, has started both the games. Started, I think he started the game in um, Ilarnica, yes, he did. So uh, a change. Andreas Paniotu wearing number two, Northern Ireland as they kick off praying from uh, right to left in their green shirts, white shorts and green socks of Carson Goal, a back four of Spencer, Ballard, Johnny Evans and Kieran Brown. Lavery wide on the right, McMenamin on the left uh, and then there's McNair, Davis and Charles with Lafferty, the main man up front. And I'll give you the Cypriot lineup in just a second, but Northern Ireland have won the ball back on the right-hand side. They're trailing by a goal to nil. That's a, an illegal challenge on Lavery, is it? Knows as the Spanish referee play on. Gogic has got away with it. Clears it as far as Shea uh, as Brody Spencer on the right-hand side. Headers won, uh, but it only deflects the ball off the head of Lafferty into the waiting arms of uh, Chris Adolo, who's making his debut. And then the back three of Artemidis, Gogic and Leifis. Uh, substitute Paniotu, Tsionis, uh, Castanos, Kiriakou, whose uh, free kick was nodded in for the goal. Uh, Nicholas Paniotu, and then up front they've uh, Christofi and the goal scorer Kakoulis. Uh, the sun has gone back in, the lights are on here. Northern Ireland have given the ball away inside the centre circle. Stephen Davis winning cap number 138, his 100th competitive international match. Uh, but Cyprus, they themselves have got the ball back in the Northern Ireland half. They're in white shirts blue shorts, bright blue shorts and white socks they've never won an away game in the Nations League they scored their first goal in this campaign in Group C2 and uh, our producer Hidden Parry very helpfully suggests that the other teams currently in uh, playoff positions at the bottom of their groups and, and all the C groups are Lithuania Gibraltar and Azerbaijan so those are possible opponents for you would say either Cyprus or Northern Ireland um, come whenever that is March 2024 I think those games would be, so an eternity away and Cyprus uh, with a goal scored by Kekoulis flicked header from that Kiriakou free kick in the 32nd minute they're and just they're passing through us again we they're retaining the possession in the opening, get the ball opening off moments, him. John O'Neill, veteran of two World Cups, <laughs> uh, we talk more after 4 o'clock about Billy Bingham whose uh, team were so strong here in the early years of the 1980s Cyprus on the left hand side there's no atmosphere at all No. And the home fans it has the feeling of an exhibition now the fans were stunned by that goal and they're watching now Cypress are dictating retaining the play, possession yeah, they're dictating the play uh, they have the ball with the left back Paniatu on the left hand side strong challenge coming in from Brody Spencer making his uh, home debut home senior debut 
Danny had to felt that Spencer went right through him. But again, Michael, since the you know the game's kicked off, we haven't been able to get on the ball. It's a good challenge. Here's yeah. the rain again, John. Yeah. For about the fourth time this afternoon. I mean, the lads are right when they're talking about half time. The first 15 minutes, you know, we created half chances, but at least we were getting into the 18-yard box. You know, and then we go away from that. I don't know why. The man by the byline has shown too much of that to Ballard. He's chipped that out of play on the far side. Yeah. But Michael, you know, we know the problem we have with scoring goals, and a goal's got to change this game. One goal in the last six home games, John. Yeah, I know, but I mean, a goal. I mean, you know, the, the next goal, you know, is, is it's easy to say is vital. Northern Ireland trying to get the ball out of their last third of the park. It's a s strong run on the on the far side, and uh, that's uh, excellent work by Walshay Charles. But Northern Ireland have given the ball away, and that's a. A foul challenge by Brody Spencer. Yeah, I think he needed half. to do it as well. Charles did well. He slipped the ball to, to Steve Davis. I think Davis felt that he was fouled. You know, you can see it in all the games I've been watching during the Nations League. The referees have been told to let a lot more go than normal, yeah. and the players have got to get used to that. You know, maybe, you know, uh, three or four months ago, they've been getting free kicks for these, but the referees are letting the game to be a little bit more physical. Yes, remarkably. Uh, I'm not going to say lax refereeing, but yes, the Spanish referee today has let things go. Was it? That's a hefty challenge on the far side. The wind's got up there, goes the lid of the uh, sweetie tub, disappearing half a dozen rows down. Uh, but Jilton is too slow to catch that. Spinning away like a, a spinning top. Or a, oh, dear me. Oh, uh, the event sec man caught it very nicely. Could be a slip fielder, possibly. Uh, all the empty wrappers have gone. This is it's like a Wizard of Oz here. Um, Play continues with McMenamin on the ball. I'm holding down every piece of paper in front of me. Jim Magilton has put the lid back on. Good work. And that's going to bounce awkwardly for Lafferty and out of play for the goal many, kick. How many times have we tried that ball and it just hasn't come off? A reminder of the, the options on the bench. Um, Connor Bradley, Paddy Lane, Charlie McCann, possibly debut. To be honest, Michael, you know, you talk about the options on the bench, uh, and, you know, I, it, it doesn't seem to make a big lot of difference to no. me because I don't think the way we're playing is helping any of the players that are out there. Remember, there's no George Savile, no Billy Peacock, Farrell both injured. I mean, McMenamin looks a threat, but we can't get the ball to him. You know, when Charles gets on the ball, he, he you know, he, he pulls out great passes, but we don't get the ball to him. It's difficult to tell who's playing with this swirling win there's a substitute winning the ball back goes well on the right hand side this is good play by cyprus christoffi can't get it past brown but he the bounce of the ball favors him christoffi now edge of the area brody spencer's let the man in and an opportunity it's going to be two nil is the flag up no it's not kakoulis has got his second goal a horror show a cross in from Tsionis and tapped in from two yards out by Kakoulis. An absolute shocker. It's a nightmare for Northern Ireland at Windsor Park. The sixth minute of the second half. It's Northern Ireland nil, Cyprus two. Yeah, I mean, Christophe, is, you know, he's run past two or three green shirts. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, Zionis has missed hit the shot <laughs> and it worked out well for them. Spencer let the ball run past him, though. I'm wondering, are they looking at this again for offside? don't think the, the assistant referee was more than happy. Oh. See, I, I don't know if they're looking here or not. Did you I think they are. The referee is certainly yeah. standing uh, with Evans and Davis alongside him. It, it was, was a, a slight It was a barging hint. run yeah. by Christophe. He fed Sionis. Um, Brody Spencer let the ball pass. You'll have a look at it again, him. Michael. No. Well, no, I don't, think, I don't think we'll get that. I think he's in lane. And Kakoulis had the simplest of opportunities to tap home from about two or three yards out. And they're checking it on VAR. But uh, the ball is on the centre spot, so... Yeah, it's, I, th it's I think the home from team expect the goal yeah. to be given. I think, I think they're going to give this a goal. The Spanish match officials are looking at it. Still looking at it. Goal check VAR, it says on the big screen. Goal's been given. It's goal, yeah. Not a huge surprise. It's 2 0, John. To be honest, man, I could not see this beyond my wildest dreams. You know, I expected us Worst to. Worst nightmares, yeah. You mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, I expected us to, to have a reaction and uh, to put in a much stronger performance. Long ball forward, down by Lafferty, Stephen Davis. McNair's touch wasn't a good one. I just couldn't see this happening to us. 
Northern Ireland throw in on this left hand side two goals for Kekulis uh, the big um, Kosovo centre forward he got two goals as well didn't he Mariki yep uh, Cyprus hadn't scored a goal in this campaign they scored twice in the opening 52 minutes here at Windsor Park this is uh, we talked about it a shocking result with Northern Ireland lost in Larnick in 73. Of problems. You can see the players now are getting annoyed with one another. Evans with the ball forward and that's straight into the waiting hands of the goalkeeper. The fans are getting annoyed. Uh, rightly so. I mean, Ballard, you know, is, is 10 yards, 15 yards inside uh, the separate half and he can't find a green shirt. This is as bad an atmosphere, John, oh, as yeah, we have I'm, I'm, had here yeah, at Windsor in a full house. In a long, long time. Not a down by Evans. Brown. Evans. The only option is to roll the ball back to Trevor Carson. He's come out of his area, clears left footed. You know, again, the two two lads at half time were, were talking about this. Ball nodded I mean, the forward. The confidence by in the team, Michael, is just shattered. Absolutely shattered now. Right, what does Barraclough do? What are changes going to make any difference at all? Brody Spencer has gone on a rampaging run down the right hand side. Davis either didn't see him or, or couldn't produce the ball. That's a, that's a dreadful Evans ball know, was it. by Evans to McMenamin. has been cut out by the substitute. You couldn't yeah, put it past the separate scoring goal number three here. Kiriakou with a cross to the back post. It's half cut out by Daniel Ballard. Diving to the floor. It was an important challenge or an important block. Otherwise, the man at the back post was in for a clear shot and goal. This is shocking stuff. It is poor stuff. Ball forward by uh, Davis looking for Charles to make the run. Charles is... Uh, had the ball taken off as two by Laifis and the Cypriots are you know, comfortable. The, yeah, I was just going to say, Michael, the, the, you know, the, the astonishing thing about this is this is Cyprus. Yep. <laughs> Cyprus. Never won a Belfast and they've never won an away Nations League game. As Joel was saying, they rarely win competitive matches away from home. But, but it's the way they're playing, Michael, you know, I mean, it's not as if this is a fluke. They deserve to be in front. They're passing it better than us. And, and when you look at the, you know, the, the the games that we've played up to now, every team that we've played have been able to pass the ball better than us. Davis, looking for that pass to Spencer on the right hand side, nods it into the path of Lavery. But I think the wind is is blowing that, and buffeting it away as Lavery's down under the challenge of Laifis. It means a lot. Of these Cypriots have played well, John. They have. There's not many no. of them you could say having a bad game. No. Oh, that's cleared up field in Northern Ireland. And they the body language is shocking here. Yeah, they definitely, I was just going to say, they definitely seem to want it a whole lot more than we do. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the bench. I think we're going to see another change in the uh, Cyprus ranks. And a man down there receiving final instructions from Mr. Uh, Kostanoglu. And the Northern Ireland have yeah, we given the ball away that. on the far side. Here comes Cyprus, still inside their own half. It's scooped looking for Christoffi. That's not a good pass, though. It'll be picked up by Conor McMenamin. He's almost now back playing as a as a left wing back. He's so but he's deep. never he's never got a pass, you know, with his back to the line here and been able to have a go in the and Ballard you know, over the halfway line. That's Lavery with his back to goal. McNair halfway inside the Cypriot half gives it out to uh, Kieran Brown. His first ball he finally he's got. feeds McMenamin on the left. He's got two defenders in front of him. McMenamin's got go. past one. He's done well. Cross to the back post. Uh, Lafferty was tussling with the defender. He's picked it up. Kyle Lafferty on the right hand side gets the cross in. Here's McMenamin with his back to goal. Kieran Brown edge of the area. They're waiting for somebody to have a pop and goal. Back with Brown. Left edge of the area off the back side of Christoffi. And Cyprus will come away with the ball. They smash it upfield. Kakoulis, the man who's on a hat trick, he's tussling with Ballard for it. He's got the pace to beat Ballard, but Ballard is strong to yeah. come back and win the ball. I'll tell you, Ballard needed to do that because it was one, one against one, and if, if Ballard doesn't win, we're going to see changes. We're going to see uh, White is coming on. We're going to see Thompson coming on. I was just making the point that you know that McMenamin hadn't had a ball with his back to the line here, and the, the first one he gets, you know, and he creates a chance. No, he's just <laughs> why doesn't Brown just give him the ball? So it's at least a double change from what we can see up here high in the in the uh, south stand. Gavin White and Jordan Thompson. Thompson, of course, providing the um, set-piece ball in Pristina for the Northern Ireland goal scored by Ballard. McMenamin on the left-hand side, right-footed cross. Half cleared by the head of Gogic. This is Brody Spencer inside the separate penalty area in the right-hand yeah, side. He's tried he's to do too much, but he's won. Oh, I thought he won the throw-in. I thought he'd won the throw-in yeah. as well. But, off, Michael, uh, again, Taniatu. simple ball. Get the ball to McMenamin's feet. 
Yep, that was the, the start earlier. October 2019, Kazakhstan, the last away win for Cyprus. Uh, two changes for Northern Ireland. One change for Cyprus. Coming on is Papoulis. And White and uh, Jordan Thompson. Thompson on for his 24th cap. White on for his 27th. Shane Lavery coming off. Lavery yeah. doesn't look best impressed as he uh, goes off away. And the crowd aren't either. You can hear the response to that substitution. And Shea Charles is going off, John. Shea Charles, number 15, Jordan Thompson. Right, how does that change things? Well, it's 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 like for right in the sense of, you know, putting Lavery up front, or, or sorry, way on in place of Lavery. And I'm not sure about the midfield one, I really am not. Thompson missed the first two games in this uh, quadruple header. And he is on now for the last 31 minutes. Northern Ireland feeling by two goals to nil. And at the moment, don't look like getting back into the game. Cyprus have done their best to give the ball back. It's with Northern Ireland on the halfway line. Stephen Davis. Uh, the applause is for Lavery and Shea Charles as they make their way around in front of us. Uh, from the fans here in the south stand and this is the applause for Billy Bingham of course 58th minute they sort of got lost in the they did lost, get lost uh, with the, the substitution the team were two yeah. down in the substitution but yes that was the uh, in, in reference to 1958 of course Billy Bingham a vital member of the squad in yeah, Sweden I, I think they were sort of trying to do that and applaud Shane Lavery at the same time and you're right Michael got lost ever so slightly well, well remembered, John. 2 0 down against Cyprus. The, the mood isn't a great one. No, it's not. McManaman putting pressure on uh, Artematis, who's done well against Sweetie Rappers, blowing away into the. Yeah, look, the distance. technically, they are. They are oh, That's God, a good challenge, good though, by, by Thompson, Thompson on the halfway yeah. line to win the ball back for Paddy McNair. McNair now looking at White making a run in front of him. And here is Brody Spencer into the path of White down by the. Uh, the byline on the right hand side back to Spencer cross in there's nobody there in a green shirt and just poked away by the Cypriot defence and Kakoulis now the danger is Northern Ireland will throw so many bodies forward they're going to yep. be caught in the break and Kakoulis well, I think they're going to have has to. won the free kick inside his own half yeah they're going to have to do that and just take their chances at the back uh, the wind's calmed down the sun is back out the weather has been uh, hugely changeable and this might be a memorable occasion at Windsor Park for all the wrong mm -hmm. reasons 2-0 down to Cyprus, having already lost 1-0 uh, to Greece, 3-2 away to Kosovo. And they were, you can argue, fortunate to get a nil-all draw a week ago in Larnaca. Look at the space and the time. That's a lovely the ball spread now. to Christoffi on the right-hand side. Christoffi coming in, feel the way he did for the start of that second goal. They're just retaining possession. They are. Cyprus. And that's all they have to do. I mean, they're 2-0 two two in front. They've got, a, you know... Northern Ireland have got to be made to chase the ball and they're doing that Northern Ireland are heading to the bottom of the group with just that one point and still no victories they have to do something dramatic as uh, Brody Spencer wins the goal kick uh, as that clearance came off the backside of the Cypriot attacker you know we can we can talk about the fact that we have four games in the space of ten days and uh, the I, absentees I do think as well I'm sure will be raised but I, I don't think that accounts for you know the the performances you know it, it, it there's some mitigation for that, but outside the opening sort of 20, 25 minutes today. Yeah. That, and that's, then the that, heads went down when the goal was scored. The long ball scored. attempted to be passed through towards McMenamin. That's a, a foul challenge by Lafferty, but play continues because the Cypriots are in possession. Back with their goalkeeper, right footed clearance. Uh, header one down by Brown. Here's McMenamin halfway inside the Cypriot half on the left. He's been thrown to the floor. That'll be a free kick. Yeah, definite foul. Free kick about five yards in from the left-hand touchline. Jordan Thompson jogs across. He's going to take it. There's less than half an hour to play here at the National Stadium. The sun is oh, I mean, like back Menem, out. I think Miniman's standing out there on his own. I don't know why he just doesn't give it to him. 
Combs was very cute. He's brought the ball. <laughs> He's brought the ball in another five yards. Not spotted by the Spanish referee. Here it comes from the left-hand side. It'll come in from Jordan Thompson, left-footed. Remember, the free kick led to a goal of Pristina. It's a low one, and it's off the toe of the defender. Or was it? Oh, I think it was a Kyle Lafferty. Was it? Kyle Lafferty. Yeah. It was Lafferty. Yeah, yeah, good wide, delivery in by Thompson. The goal. He, you know, he produced a great cross for the goal for Ballard the other the other night. You know, and there's pace on there. Yeah, it and, was Miles uh, on the volley, a stretching Lafferty could only just couldn't control it. Smash it high into the back rows of the uh, cup stand away to our left. Just Dolo, who must be thinking this senior international football is a bit it's of a easy, double. Isn't it? Yeah, his clearance crosses the halfway line, header forward by McNair, chested down by Lafferty. It's with Stephen Davis. There's room for uh, Bruley Spencer on the right hand side. Lafferty's gone on a run. He switches play to the left-hand side, and Kieran Brown links up uh, with Conor McMenamin. Up against uh, one defender, gets a cross, cross. good cross to the back post, header down, Brody Spencer was that handball. The fans behind the goal away to the left think it was, it was a strong scored. header by Spencer. He should have scored. It was blocked by the yeah. defender, some part of the defender's body. Northern Ireland continue with Spencer on the right-hand side, cross into the goalkeeper's oh, hands. Cross. Keep an eye on that uh, replay screen there, John, to have a look yeah, at that when it comes Spencer up, header. A great play by, by Kieran Bryan. You know, he started to realise, give the ball to McManaman. It's a great cross to the back post, but, I mean, Did it hit it off the better. I don't, I don't think he, the defender's even seen it there. He's just... It That's looks as if his arms well. Be a very harsh penalty. Yeah, well by his side, but um, you know, great play by Brown because he gives McManaman the ball and then he stays away from him and he leaves him with one on one against the the fullback. And the last three times that he's got it, McManaman has skinned them. Cyprus inside their own half, and Jordan Thompson again does well. Wins the ball back for McManaman, edge of the area, spreads it to Spencer. Spencer links up with White inside the penalty area on the right hand side. Cross is not a good one and volleyed away upfield by Cyprus. Well, that's what happens when you're... And here uh, comes Cyprus on the break, but it's cut out by Ballard. Ballard is... Uh, great tackle by Ballard. Did very he well in the challenges. He... His first touch was a bad one. Yeah, the second touch, he won the ball back. Can Northern Ireland get a goal back to give them something to cling on to in the last 25 minutes? Just give them the ball. <laughs> Thompson. Infield at Ballard or Northern Ireland. Are they at the front stage yet with 25 minutes left to play? Johnny Evans, halfway inside the Cyprian half, gives it wide to the left. Northern Ireland need to score, they need to score soon. McMenamin on the left-hand side, was that off a hand? No, says the Spanish match official. Side footer up to Kakoulis. Um, they brought down by Ballard. Play on, says the referee. <laughs> he seems to have lost goal, his whistle. <laughs> Evans jogging forward. McNair spreads it to Spencer on the right-hand side. White is there as well. Gavin White looking at the options. Gives it back to Paddy McNair. Ballard inside the centre circle. 21 players inside the Cypress half away to our left. McMenamin seems to be the most likely outlet for a goal, or an assist anyway. Nodded away by Gogic, and that'll be a throw-in Northern Ireland yeah, left. Everything is coming down this left-hand side with McMenamin. So They're about to make another change. Antonio is about to come on for Cyprus, whose resources have probably been stretched as well by these four games in 11 days. 24 minutes left. Kieran Brown winding up for a long throw into the Cyprus penalty area. Everybody's jumping. Defender is up, nodded down by White as far as um, Jordan Thompson. Right corner of the penalty area. Left footed cross in and taken by the goalkeeper. Dropped by the goalkeeper oh. and clutched by the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was a good ball in by... Uh by White, I think it was. The goalkeeper in the centre half almost got themselves mixed up there and I thought it was going to fall to Ballard, but uh, he was able to recover. The ball was in from Thompson. Yeah, Thompson with the ball in. Thompson, sorry, yeah. And the goalkeeper, uh, just a little moment of, of doubt when he was trying to clear the bodies in front of him. Gogic got in the yeah, way. He's got his he almost around his head. He almost claimed Gogic's head <laughs> rather than the ball. And he's quite similar on that very skin head haircut. I don't think he had last week. Davis gives it out to the far side. We're about to see Connor Bradley coming on. Northern Ireland 2 0 down. They're going to bring on a fullback. Cleared by Cyprus and um, Castanos is, is going to get here. taking a whack here. And that is going to be a yellow card for Thompson. He's going to miss the next game. He's going to miss the game here against uh, Kosovo in September. 
I think it's Steve Davis who could put it. Davis? I think I'm not sure it was Davis. I'll see we'll it see again. No, it was Davis. Yeah, that's not My was apologies. Davis, yeah. First yellow card for Davis in this campaign. So life is the uh, centre backs going off. Minas uh, Antonio is on for his 14th cap. So Stephen Davis is on a yellow card. And life is, is uh, he's taking a while to get off the park. Right, we're going to see Dion Charles. We're going to see Nalm again. And we're going to see Connor Bradley. We only, I only saw Bradley because he was the most advanced of the three subs. So apologies for my sarcasm. We're going to see McGinn and Dion Charles' changes up front. So the last throws of the dice. Bradley on for his eighth cap. Dion Charles, yet another substitute appearance. And uh, Niall McGinn on for his 73rd cap. Coming off, McManaman's off. Number seven, nine McGinn. I thought McManaman's done well today. I, I, I don't understand that. I really don't. Lafferty's going Lafferty. off. Number 11. And Dion I would Charles. assume... Do we assume Spencer? I would think so, yeah. Yep. So the home Spencer. debuts have ended for Brody Spencer Connor and Connor Bradley. McMiniman. And Bradley is on. Popular figure here. We've talked about his uh, crunching challenges. I mean, I don't understand him taking off uh, McMenamin. To me, he's been the only one that's, that's provided anything going forward here in the second half. Unless the lad is extremely tired, but he doesn't look it. Unless he's been carrying an odd, I just can't, I can't understand that. Maybe we, we will hear after the game, but certainly in the second half, he's provided all the emphasis down this left-hand side. Uh, 21 minutes to try and find one goal, two goals back. It's looking unlikely at the moment. Cyprus with the ball inside the Northern Ireland half. Well, the, 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 uh, the way they're playing, Michael, is almost the way that Kosovo was playing. They're passing the ball very well, so it remains to be seen whether in the last 10 or 15 minutes they tire. Brody Spencer get back into is, uh, is the man receiving all the applause. He's already a popular figure here. The flag is up on this near side. Northern Ireland free kick inside their own half. Johnny Evans will take it. That's still the applause for uh, Brody Spencer walking right round behind the goal and now heading towards the Northern Ireland dugout. McNair on the Northern Ireland left, just inside the Cyprus half. 20 minutes left to play. Cyprus leading by two goals to nil, both goals by Andronikos Kikoulis, who's now the main man up front on his own. Cyprus are packing the midfield and packing the defence yeah, for it the last 20 difficult. minutes. Yeah, they're making it very difficult for us to try and play through them. We get one ball into the strikers and it ends up coming back to us. Stephen Davis on the Northern Ireland right-hand side. Chip forward by Thompson, not a down by Gogic. As far as Dion Charles, Charles right corner of the area. He's uh, spread it wide for Connor Bradley. Bradley's oh, not begged. A separate oh defender God, has been left. Dion Charles must be a goal. McGinn has been stopped and it's oh. tapped in. Yeah. And it's Paddy McNair with a scrappiest goal that you'll ever see. It was a Cypriot horror show in the heart of the defence. They somehow invited Bradley to square the ball. McGinn's shot was blocked. It fell to Paddy McNair and he tapped in his sixth international goal. And with 19 minutes to go, a lifeline. Northern Ireland won. Cyprus 2. What well, you're right, it was a horror show. The ball's come in. Bradley has knocked the ball in. The, I think it was I'm not sure who it was on the on the Cypriot side. He goes and he dummies it as if he's going to kick it into the stand, thinking the ball's going to go over the touchline. It was Paniotto, the, the 13, the left back. Yeah. I mean, that's let, the worst. Let Charles square the square ball. The ball. Great the save. In shot was blocked. Yeah, it was a great save by the keeper. The keeper uh, blocks it, but it goes straight to. Uh, Paddy McNair. Paddy McNair on the back post. He, he scuffed, almost missed him. He it. scuffed the finish. Dear me. Not a goal for a compilation tape nope. or video, but, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll take it. We'll see now if we can, you know, mount a little bit of a challenge here, put them under pressure. They've been so comfortable the whole game, but goals changes things. That was shocking from Tony Otto. Left the ball where he could, he, he could have kicked it out. Kicked he could it have cleared it. He, I don't know what he was thinking. So is that the moment, the little bit of luck that Northern Ireland need? 18 minutes left. Northern Ireland won Cyprus 2, Paddy McNair with the goal 
easily his, his least convincing strike, but it doesn't matter. Forward ball looking for Dan Charles. Oh, oh it's been headed up by Gogic. Going to fall for now. McGinn edge of the area. McGinn against the goalkeeper. It's like beach football at the minute. And Cyprus come away with it. Yeah, they can. They really are rattled. Lucky. They are rattled. They put again. the ball out of play on this near side. It's it's like the last 10 minutes of Kosovo all yeah. over again. The centre half and the goalkeeper get themselves in all sorts of problems. The ball's on the edge of the 18-yard box, but it will not come down from McGinn. And all the, all the goalkeeper can do is stand in front of him, and to be fair, he did enough. Gavin White. It's all Northern Ireland now. Listen to the crowd. Thompson swings it out to this left-hand side. McGinn onto his right foot. Now McGinn up against the defender. He's done well. McGinn gets it to uh, Johnny Evans. Infield to Thompson. Lots of white shirts in front of him. Spreads it out to the right-hand side to the goal scorer, Paddy McNair. Decent cross needed. Nodded away. Only as far as Jordan Thompson. Doesn't control it cleanly. Gives it back to Johnny Evans. Halfway inside the Cyprian half. Thompson out to this left-hand side. Gavin White popping up now. Up against the full-back. Crosses to the back post. Doesn't break for Bradley and drilled away high into the evening sky by Papoulis the substitute out to the goal scorer McNair on the right hand side Stephen Davis he might link up once more with McNair Bradley's there too gives it back to Paddy McNair it's very complicated stuff Davis retains possession for Northern Ireland on the right hand side to Bradley Bradley pokes it into Dion Charles he leaves it McNair gets the shot oh. well wide in the end on the left but not a clean connection nor accurate no it was good play by Davis he feeds Bradley Bradley makes you know, a, a direct run straight in from the touchline along the 18 yard box feeds De Dion Charles Charles dummies it it was a great dummy to uh, McGinn but he just can't or was it McNair he just couldn't get the shot away <laughs> he want goals changes games it's frantic stuff you, you can't say they're not trying John no you know they're giving it a go I've never ever thought that Northern Ireland don't try it. Sometimes they don't apply themselves in the right way and in the wrong direction, but you always get a 100% from Brown wins them. the header. Uh, McGinn trying to lay it into the path of McNair. It's gone out for a separate throw-in on this near side there. They right, are, they are rattled. In left, the they're going to make another change. It's our old mate who rattled the crossbar a week ago in Larnaca. Uh, Catalaris coming on for his 17th cap. And the throw-in will be taken by one of the, the many second-half substitutes for Cyprus, Andreas uh, Paniotu, on this right-hand side. Still Catalaris waiting to come on, chipped forward by uh, Cyprus. And Castanos gives it into Kakulis, edge of the area. Third Cyprus goal would surely kill this game off. And Northern Ireland have given possession away. Here is uh, Castanos, halfway inside the Northern Ireland half. Kiriakou, whose free kick created the first goal in the first half nice passing triangles that's a, not a good touch by Kiriakou might have played it in the path of Dion Charles not it away by the defender and out of play Northern Ireland throw the uh, Greek manager of the, of the Cyprus team Nikos uh, Kostanoglu is furious yeah, the way his team were playing at the minute they're starting to panic a little bit they desperately need to get their foot on the ball and at the minute Northern Ireland have got the pedal down and they're, they're not letting up a strong ball for it by Ballard to White with his back to goal. White's uh, no, giving it away though inside the Cyprus half. Uh, Christoffi plays it off the, the shins of the back heel of Kiriakou and here comes uh, McNair inside the middle of the middle of the park spreads it to the left hand side Brown to the left of McGinn comes in field McGinn's beaten one beaten two he's shown too much of that to the central defender and Cyprus have it inside their own half. Now McGinn chasing to make up for his own mistake. Taniatu on the right. That's oh, a terrible ball, me. giving the ball away. Here's Dion Charles, edge of the area, Charles feeds it in. Opportunity nearly for Bradley, still inside the penalty area. It's been given away once more. Shot coming in, brilliant save to deny Dion Charles for the goalkeeper. It's all Northern Ireland. Gavin White gets the edge of the byline to the back post. Somehow Cyprus clear the ball, only as far as Paddy McNair, who's being urged to shoot, gives it to Thompson. Out to that right-hand side now, Bradley thought he was in on goal. Bradley to McNair, who's lost the ball to Castell on the far side and is that the attack for the moment uh, dissipating from Northern Ireland Cyprus have it they've done very well to clear it upfield only as far as Ballard nods it into the path of Stephen Davis surely an equaliser is about to come for Northern Ireland there's 13 minutes left to play here Kieran Brown with the ball inside the Cypriot half leaves it to Niall McGinn it's a wall of white shirts in front of McGinn McGinn now thinks about chipping the goalkeeper and chips oh, it and it's tipped me. over the top by the keeper I don't think it was going in no. but the keeper was making absolutely sure surely the keeper touched that did he not 
No, says the Spanish referee, and here comes Catalaris. Uh, oh, I suspect will be the shocking final there. change. Yeah. Uh, he's coming on uh, for Kakulis, who will not get his hat trick here in Belfast. It was shocking defending from Sabres again. No, he didn't he touch the it. Bar. The ball came off the, the bar, bar, but the yeah. sort of top edge of the bar. Yeah. Um, but again, how, you know. Best opportunity there was Dion Charles. Just shot, doubt, yeah. shot well saved, shot by, well the saved by the goalkeeper. We've said it, Michael. We've said it during the three games. You know the teams that we we're playing. No matter how good they are on the ball going forward, I still think they've been suspect. They're all suspect at the back. When you can get at them at the back, they are poor. But it's, it's just it's taking like, too long to it's get like there. It's like Sunday. We, we've waited until they're two 0 down. Northern Ireland waited until they're two 0 down before they. Michael, there's a, you know, a catalogue of those games. We did it against Hungary here. We didn't play in the last 10 minutes. You know, we played Slovakia in the playoff. We didn't play until the last 10 minutes. Here goes minutes. Bradley. 12 minutes left to play here at the National Stadium. Bradley nearly level the 18-yard box. Back with McNair, who got the goal back a few moments ago. Stephen Davis. Northern Ireland right-hand side finds Thompson. Winds up, thinks about a shot. Too many shirts, white shirts in front of him. Thompson, he's, the options aren't there for him. Johnny he's Evans. He's played really well since he's come on. Davis, right corner of the penalty area, trying to slide it through for Gavin White, and all Cypress could do is smash the ball out of play. That was a great clearance kick if you're Johnny Sexton. <laughs> it nearly went out, but out came Trevor Carson to keep it alive for Northern Ireland. The home fans are convinced there's a goal coming. Long ball sprit played by Ballard, looking for Brown to win the header. Deflects up, surely the goalkeeper has to come and claim that. Nodded away by the Cypriots, who have been panicking since McNair's goal. But remember, they can break, and they might be able to break now. Is it the substitute trying to feed uh, Christoffi, who was in an offside position? And the ball will just drift out of play um, on this near side for the Northern Ireland throw. Yeah, he's let it go. He knew he was offside, and you could see the assistant referee was just about to, to uh, put his flag up, but he, he didn't touch the ball and let it run out for the well, throw. Well, it's easily the most exciting. Uh, the last 10 minutes against Kosovo were exciting. This has been the most exciting uh, passage of play in these matches at Windsor Park. Northern Ireland football. looking for an equaliser. 10 minutes left to play. McGinn, left hand side cross to the back post, there's and nobody it drips there. out. And there's nobody there. There's nobody there. The last two crosses into the box, we have not enough green shirts. Uh, advanced positions. <laughs> Where is this performance coming from? Need a drink of water. Now the goalkeeper's gone down. He's gone down. What a surprise. Yeah, you're right, Michael, but at the end I of the think, day... Did he, did he stand on a B there? I think he might have. <laughs> I mean, they, they just need a breather. And Players you, are taking on can, water. I'm taking on can water. John's the, taking on water. You can understand why he's actually trying to get his, his team a little bit of a break here because they certainly have been under the course for the last 10 minutes. And we could so easily have had the equaliser. The Tom defending has been very poor. Thompson came on, obviously, on... What day is it today? <laughs> Thursday. Thursday, yeah. And uh, got the set piece that led the goal. He's certainly had an impact here well uh, that's because he's coming on as an impact sub in the last 20-25 well, minutes he's, uh, he's obviously had his injury problems and, and it's possibly they think that they might not have been able to get a full 90 minutes out of him but he's certainly made a difference since he came on Christodoulo is ready to continue his senior international debut in goal for Greece all on that orangey brown away to our left now can Northern Ireland pick up the pace once more with Nine minutes plus stoppage time left to try and find an equaliser. That's a dreadful ball. Well, to be honest, McGinn should have came short for it. I think he was a little bit he lazy did well there. He the ball back to yeah. Evans, who spreads it out into the sunshine. Again, lovely blue sky here in South Belfast as Daniel Ballard crosses the halfway line. Ball infield uh, to Stephen Davis, spreads it to that man, Jordan Thompson, wearing 15. Into the penalty area. Opportunity for Bradley over the top. Oh, his name was nearly in lights there. The little fella from Castle Durg made a brilliant run to the edge of the six-yard box and just scooped it over the bar. That's the way we should be playing. And the centre-half gives the ball to Steve Davis, you know, brings it across the park, slips a little ball to Jordan Thompson, and he threads a brilliant ball through. And Bradley, with a great run, just gets too much on it. And as he's lifted over the keeper, he's just a little bit too much, and it's taken it over the bar. Great move. Suddenly playing football, John. We're playing football. We're playing football through the, the midfield. We're playing football through the left winger. It was Mc, uh, McMenamin, now it's uh, 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 McGinn. And Thompson as well is playing his role off the bench. He has done well since he's come on. That's a, a nothing ball forward by Cyprus who are rocking. 
Never won in Belfast, never won away from home in the Nations League, haven't won away from home since October 2019 against Kazakhstan. Th Northern this 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 annoys me here when 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 Brown ends up in front of McGinn. And that is the case. McGinn now running down the left hand side. He has support from Brown, doesn't need him. Ball infield to Thompson. Thompson gets the ball back. Jordan Thompson. Oh. That's high, wide, and not very handsome, but that was a nice move. Nice one two on his 18 yard box, probably just on his wrong foot. You know, he's rushing the shot a little bit, a little bit anxious, but again, good move, good ball infield from McGinn. But again, Michael, get Brown on the ball, get McGinn out here with his back to the line and let him take on the fullback. Chris Adolo slowly walking backwards, preparing to take this goal kick. We've got seven minutes of normal time, plus a fair, I would say a fair whack of additional time. Balls bouncing inside the Northern Ireland half, nodded forward by Kieran Brown. Bright sunshine, there's that strip of shadow down below us as uh, Paniatu, the substitute, keeps it uh, in possession of the white shirts, Chris Duffy. Look at Steve Davis, you wouldn't believe, you know... The, the amount of running... And yeah, it's incredible. He and Johnny Evans, the yeah. only two players to start all four matches. Yeah. It's Evans tremendous. is jumping now. Well, he actually just played on the volley to the waiting Jordan Thompson inside the centre circle, Again, crosses look, the halfway look at, line. Look at the space that McGinn has out here. To Connor Bradley, who st still looks like a schoolboy to me. Yeah. Slight figure, gives the ball back uh, to Jordan Thompson, spreads it just to give Kieran it, give Brown. It Brown has got support from again. It wasn't a great pass from again. McGinn does he, well. he ends up in front of him. Onto the right foot, to the back post. Everybody's jumping, punched away by the goalkeeper. Bradley will pick this up on the right hand side for Northern Ireland. Three green shirts inside the penalty area. Oh, Davis's ball wasn't ball. a great one. Back to Bradley, who takes a tumble. Ballard's going to pick it up though on the right hand side. Daniel Ballard, level 18 yard box, crossing in, looking for McNair. It's headed away to Brown. Northern Ireland are knocking at this Cypriot door. Is yeah, there any way they can barge through and get this equalising goal? Well, they're Six camped outside left. the 18-yard box at the minute, you know, and, and going back and forth trying to look for that opening. Johnny Evans out to Ballard on the right. Ballard looking at the option. Simple ball to uh, Thompson, middle of the park. Thompson oh, that was, was, was for... I don't know what I don't know either for. McNair or McGinn, but neither of them was moving and it's out of play for a goal kick. No was uh, too much pace on the ball whether it was for McNair or for McGinn neither of the two of them were getting that five minutes of normal time uh, Mr Kostanoglu is not happy he's exchanging words with the fourth official got a, a white t-shirt a bit of a belly but hey don't we all <laughs> his white t-shirt and his, his, his beige summer suit his jacket and his trousers don't match but I don't think he care. I don't think so. Not but he is an animated figure. Side, anyway, because uh, Cyprus, since the, the goal they gave away to Paddy McNair, have been rocking. Brown has an ambitious ball looking for McGinn, but he does win the throw in off the defender. It'll be a yeah. throw in. That, uh, again, it's. Um, McGinn, McGinn's looking for the ball over the fullback. I think he'd much better come short, take it to his feet. I mean, he's got all the skill in the world to take the fullback on. You don't always have to beat him. You only need an angle to get the ball into the box. If McGinnis not here, Kieran Brown he is takes the a option. Good throw. He does take a good throw. Brown with a long throw into the area. Look at Northern Ireland looking for the equaliser. Nodded down and should be cleared by uh, Cyprus. And uh, Christoffi nods it down and he goes down like he's been hit by a, a ton truck. I'm not sure whether he's clashed heads there. No, I mean, he hasn't. You, you reckon? No. Thompson doesn't think so anyway. No. But have a look at the replay. He's wasting time. Yeah, Evans is having a go at the referee to say to say as much. No, he's not no. even touching. No contact. No contact. And then whatsoever. he goes clutching his forehead. Absolutely none. They've actually hit shoulder to shoulder. There's no contact on his head at all. The officials have uh, 16,454. Thank you for your support. 16,454, not quite a full house. It's not a bad crowd, but... So... Everybody's taking on water now. <laughs> three and a half minutes of normal time. Remember, six years ago, Northern Ireland were playing Poland, the first game of the Euros in, in Nice. Not so long ago, they were denying Italy a place in the World Cup finals yeah. with a, a battling performance, a game they could have nicked. They could have stolen, yeah. Against Italy, the yeah. uh, and that's so European frustrating, champions. Michael, you know, you know, there's, okay, we've brought a few younger lads into into the team, and 
you know, you are missing a few regulars. Plays restarted with a drop ball for McGinn. Uh, Christoffi still off the park, um, and that's a it's corner. That's going to be a corner. The goalkeeper was diving to try and prevent the ball from going out of play. He knew the defender had the last touch. Christoffi is arguing with the assistant referee and the fourth official. He has to come back on. But I mean, he took a terrible blow to the head, John. Surely this is a concussion injury. <laughs> yeah, he probably probably needs a little time to recover, but he can't get on quick Oh, enough. he is. He's fit to continue. What a miracle! <laughs> that was uh, pretty dreadful, but very very experienced well, we, player. We need, we need Thompson now to put a good delivery in here. Two minutes of normal time left. Thompson with a corner, left-hand side, Northern Ireland looking for an equaliser. Everybody's up, headers won by Ballard wide of the post. I tell you what, that is the delivery you want. It's perfect, it's right on the penalty spot, and uh, Ballard's now making himself a presence in there. Unfortunately, he just can't get enough on the, of his head on the ball, and, uh, you know, he just can't direct it onto the goal. We will keep an eye on the fourth official, who's been uh, deep in consultation with the uh, Cypriot manager, and also with... Uh, Tremitis Christoffi after his period off the park but Cyprus are back to 11 players clearance I think he has been kicking into the wind to be fair to the Cypriot goalkeeper Castanos Ballard, Ballard looks to be some player I will have to say is he, is he going to get a sniff at Arsenal this season oh, this coming uh, he, season he long ball be. forward looking for Christoffi Johnny Evans will well, well, oh, square well it to Evans. Kieran Brown Oh, well played Northern Ireland do well. Yeah. This is Bradley You're on the right hand play. side. Bradley's going on a run. There's a room in front of him. Crosses the halfway line. He's been what told to give the ball into the path of Gavin oh, White, unlucky. and the defender puts it out of play on that far side. That's the type of ball you need, Michael. You might not have got there, but you're right in the you know the edge of the 18-yard box with the throw here. Last minute of normal time. Northern Ireland 2-1 down against Cyprus. They're heading for an infamous defeat unless they can find something in these closing seconds. Gavin White, right corner of the penalty area, back with Stephen Davis. Here's White. They're four, five in the area, waiting for the cross. Gets the ball back from Bradley. Cross in. Oh, it's not going to fall to Bradley. It's side footed away by uh, Catalaris, the substitute, and Greece are going to poke it forward, but it's cut out well by Stephen Davis on the right hand side, looking uh, at the options. Here's Jordan Thompson. Thompson to Johnny Evans uh, McGinn is free on this left hand side Evans elects to go to the right hand side and uh, Connor Bradley Bradley up against the defender gives it to Davis gets the ball back Bradley with a cross can't find a green jersey Let one back by Davis on the right hand side Davis cross off the back of the defender another down by Thompson Thompson's the ball's not going to break for a green shirt oh. and put out to this far side where Niall McGinn will keep the ball in play we have played the 45 minutes the board is about to go up Northern Ireland are 2-1 down there'll six be minutes. six additional minutes time enough for Northern Ireland to equalise and win the game <laughs> McNair with a cross to the back post everybody's up header is over the top oh, of the bar from Gavin White yeah great effort by uh, White the ball slightly behind him he gets his head on it and look at the goalkeeper now <laughs> he's in the back of the goal oh, he's, he's been attacked by a butterfly in his goal area this has been a tremendous 10 or 15 into the minutes net. you know we just the crosses into the box have just not fallen to a green shirt but they're having a goal Michael the, fran, the fans will appreciate that Bradley's having a tremendous game out on that right hand side since he come on Thompson's run everything in the middle of the field Cleared up field by the goalkeeper. He's been in the wars in the last 20 minutes. And Ballard's won everything at the back. Again, Ballard, a, a nomination possibly for Northern Ireland's man of the match. Yeah, he's been steady right the whole way through the game. White is being forced back and back That's and back play. to find a little bit of a gap. Remember, six minutes we've played one of those additional six minutes. It's out to Kieran Brown, who'll cross the halfway line. He's been forced backwards, though. And it's at the feet of Johnny Evans. After four o'clock, we'll reflect on the life and career of Billy Bingham, Northern Ireland player and manager. Kieran Brown gives the ball forward. That might be overstruck for Niall again. It is a title play yeah. for goal kick. <laughs> that, that is a tough, tough ball that Kieran Brown is trying to, 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 to get into McGinn. Why isn't McGinn out here on this left hand side? He wanders across the pitch. Every McGinn now and is again. putting the ball down for the goalkeeper to take the goal kick. He's going to replace it very specifically where he wants it. Urges. He'll take as much time as he wants, Michael. And you can understand it. I mean, we would be hoping that our goalkeeper would do the same. So I don't fault him for that. I don't think Northern Ireland's number nine would go down the way Christophe did. No, no, I'm talking about the goalkeeper touched, taking yeah. his time, you know. Header one towards Dion Charles. It's going to bounce off Thompson. 
Paddy McNair is uh, chasing this one down by the left-hand corner flag. Does it take a touch off McNair? No, it doesn't. So I'll play for Northern Ireland throw in. We've played two of the additional six minutes here at the National Stadium at Windsor Park. Northern Ireland trailing Cyprus. Yeah. They haven't lost to Cyprus since 1973. That was uh, in Cyprus. I think that was Nicosia. That was an infamous defeat. This might yet be one at Windsor Park. Long throw into the area by Kieran Brown. Everybody's jumping. Is going to break for a green shirt. A smashed high into the sky. Everybody peering into the sun. It bounces on the edge of the area. Uh, Gavin oh, White, another man. slice. This is shocking by Cyprus. Oh, they're <laughs> missing the ball. And it's uh, with Northern Ireland and Thompson. And White now on the right-hand side. Defender in front of him. Cross in from the right-hand side. Dion Charles. Must go! Oh, yes! It's in! It's in! It's in! From Johnny it's off the bar and Johnny Evans surely has equalised has he? Yeah, has it been given? yes it has yeah, that must be 2-2 two, two, and it must be Johnny Evans yeah, they're going to third look at minute it. of stoppage time Northern Ireland have salvaged this game they're going to look at it in bar but I think this is well over the line Oh, it's over the line. It's Frank, the line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's Frank Lampard against it's Frank Lampard against Germany off the crossbar and over the line and Johnny Evans his fifth international goal his 98th cap and Northern Ireland have got out of jail and there's so long left Michael the uh, way they're defending at the minute this would surprise me if we turn this round I don't know how they were saying two, that didn't cross the line minutes. we, we could tell from here John that was oh, in that's a mile and I mean as soon as it happened there was no doubt about it I mean it's three yards inside the, the line you don't even need VAR we have played 49 minutes and we, we've another two, two to go yeah. there's a chance to win it now it's 2-2 two, two. blimey Jamie Northern Ireland Johnny Evans he scored a goal for a while but that's an important one that Oh, no, a chance oh, for Christoffi. No. Edge of the area. This to win it for 3 2. Christoffi oh, has won it for Cyprus, but the flag has gone up. The flag has gone up. <laughs> He's offside. Oh, Relief for the home me. fans. We got out of jail there. Oof. We got out of jail there. Uh, in the words of every oh, summarizer, I'd like to see that again, John. <laughs> He's down in the box now. He's just after scoring the Christophe, goal. Christoffi, I think, is now weeping <laughs> on the penalty spot. Oh. This is shocking. What a finish to this game. Oh, he's a mile offside, mate. Yes, he is a mile offside, mile John. Offside, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Well, it's a great finish, I have to say. What a finish. Slots it past the oncoming Trevor Carson. Uh, he's not going to get up. He's going to surely have to be booked or else get off the park. Yeah. Get is off he, the is park. he asleep? He looks like a man who's sunbathing. Oh, dear, he's limping. The referee's helped oh, him up. Brilliant. I think that nasty Trevor Carson must have cost him, uh, uh, caught him as he was slowing the ball. It, it is still 2 2. Football is it embarrassing is still sometimes. They really are embarrassing. 30 seconds plus stoppage time in injury time. Clearance upfield by Trevor Carson. Northern Ireland got an unlikely winning goal in their locker. Bradley on the right hand side. Nobody's leaving Windsor Park. Get it Top standard trying oh, to suck the ball it, into the net. It's square it. to Stephen Davis. Uh, Brown and McGinn are free on this left-hand side. Is this the last opportunity? Ten seconds left of additional time. Paddy McNair gets it into the area. The keeper's up, punches the ball away. There's nobody there in a green jersey outside the penalty area. Who has got it? Stephen Davis. Oh, Who else? Played. Feeds Gavin White. We played 51 minutes. Davis racing to keep the ball in on the right-hand side. Feeds Gavin White. This might be the last chance. He's trying oh, to get past the defender. The Should have the, the ball into the area. They've given just it away. away. Kieran Brown. Thompson now in the middle of the park. Cypress are absolutely exhausted. They're on the ropes. Here's Nile McGinn. Onto the right foot, onto the left foot. Defender in front of him. Urge to get the ball into the area. Flick towards the back post. Connor Bradley's there. Nods it into the path of Thompson. Can anybody get a shot on goal? It's going to fall for now. McGinn. Thompson's missed it. McGinn oh, slices dear. it wide. And I suspect that is that. Yeah. <laughs> There's balls flying in everywhere there. And nobody could just get a clear shot on goal. Dear, dear me. It's nothing if not exciting. It's <laughs> a great last 20 minutes. It just, well, Thompson just had a swing down, at it, yeah. missed it. Uh, McGinn had a swing at it and sliced it. And I think the um, 
those wishing it out of the car parks and get away quickly are making their way down the steps. I think the next long blast of the Spanish referee's whistle will say it is a 2-2 draw here at Windsor Park. Maybe I am speaking too quickly and there still is an opportunity for somebody, one of these two teams, to find a winning goal. Papoulis, the substitute, he's inside the Northern Ireland half but he's given the ball away. That'll be a free kick to Cyprus. Now, do they want to win the game or are they happy with a 2-2? No, I no, think they want to I, win this. I would say they, they'll, they'll... They're going to go for it. They've got, they must know this is going to be the last kick of the That's play. It's a free kick, uh, about 15 yards inside the Northern Ireland half. It's centrally positioned. And what can they come up with? Well, they're not throwing everybody forward, safe to say. I think it's going to be a... Is this going to be a long-range whack from Christoffi? There's no wall. And Christoffi is... Um, well, it's Kiriakou, actually. The orange boots scoops it forward, nodded away by Ballard. And is that that the Spanish referee has no, looked at his watch? Bradley comes away. He's still inside his own half, Connor Bradley. Oh, and there it, is full time, and Northern Ireland have come from two goals down against Cyprus to get a 2 2 draw. A goal back, a scrappy one by Paddy McNair in the 71st minute. Then Northern Ireland piled on the pressure. Dion Charles had a save. Uh, produced a wonderful save out of the debut goalkeeper Johnny Evans smashing the ball in off the crossbar in the third minute of stoppage time for the draw so Cyprus do get their first goals in the group but Northern Ireland still without a win in the Nations League after 14 attempts a match they could have lost and had they played another five minutes yeah, they could have won they could John have won it. you know you gotta got give the players some credit you know uh to me, I couldn't see this performance at all, you know, after the first half. And with 20 minutes to go, they just found something. The substitutes came on. Thompson made a big, big difference in the middle of the field. Connor Bradley at, at right back was very good as well. McGinn done his bit on the left hand side. Come, but they only start playing when they're chasing a lost cause. Michael, we've known and we've seen that down through, you know, the, the, the history of the you know the last sort of few years. We wait until, you know, we're we're behind the eight ball and then we start to play. You know, where was the team, you know, in between the first 15 minutes and the last 20 minutes? Um, I just can't answer that question. I, I just don't know. Um, why can you... I know it's always easy. When you're 2-0 down and you've got nothing to play, you know, you've got nothing to, at stake, you have to have a go for it. And again, Michael, we've been saying all along, these these teams can't defend. Kosovo couldn't defend the last 20 minutes. Cybers can't defend. You know, and, and that's where you are in this in this league. That's why the likes of Cyprus have never won that many games because good teams put them to the sword all the time. We just don't get enough pressure on these poor teams to score goals and put them under pressure and show how bad they are at defending. John, if Northern Ireland defend the way they have done in these four games oh, against decent sides yeah. in European Championship qualifying, they'll be taken the cleaners. That's a scary thing because usually our defence is solid um, and we have been wide open. Now, whether that's the players are coming off the end of a long, long season and are jaded, you know, I can allow you a little bit for that. But but having said that, this is Cyprus we're playing, you know, and we, we look poor for big, big periods of the game. Um, now, does the 2-2 draw, the fact that we've come back and, 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 you know, scored two goals, does that paper over cracks? I'm not so sure, you know, because there's times out there where we seem lost, you know, we just don't seem... Well, to... Ian Barraclough has sent you the positive aspects out of the 3-2 defeat in Pristina last uh, Thursday night. Yeah. He's going to emphasise that Northern Ireland finished the game strongly, but yeah, but you're right. They, they're you two down point, against Michael. Cyprus after 52 minutes. Yeah, we can't we can't turn up and play for 20 minutes. That's not what football's about. And against better teams, when you're two 0 down, you're not going to get back into the game. Right, John O'Neill. I think we'll hang on to discuss in the next half an hour the uh, the life of Northern Ireland career of Billy Bingham. Got a, I know we've got a, a news bulletin coming up uh, very soon as uh, the National Stadium. Empties very quickly here. I think we're doing another rain shower. Jim Chilton and Tommy Wright will give, give uh, Joel Thaggart, Thaggart their thoughts. But I don't know how you analyse that astonishing second half. Northern Ireland two down with less than half an hour to go. And in the end, they were pressing for a victory. It finished the National Stadium at Windsor Park. Northern Ireland two, Cyprus two. Sports Sound International Football with Joel Taggart. Yes, come back from Northern Ireland, 2-2, it finishes 10.30 tonight on BBC One for the highlights. Worth watching the highlights alone for the comedy defending in the build-up to both Northern Ireland goals, but in particular the second one. Um, it's, it's something like you will never ever see. 
um, balls knocked high into the sky, defenders not wanting to head them, and, and then all of a sudden it breaks for Johnny Evans. Uh, Paddy McNair, by the way, uh, scoring Northern Ireland's 700th goal in international football in the game in which he moved level on caps with uh, Billy Bingham, um, amongst others. Billy Bingham uh, on 56 caps, so too Paddy McNair, also Danny Blanchflower and Damian Johnson. As Michael was saying, we will talk more um, memories of the late, great Billy Bingham between now and half past four. We're with you until then. And we will also reflect on what we've watched over the course of the last couple of hours or so. Northern Ireland looked dead and buried, it has to be said, and then they were gifted away back into the game with the the first um, Cypriot mistake that led to Paddy McNair's goal. That gave them a little bit of life. Um, and it begged the question, really, you know, why was this not happening earlier in the game? Because it made Cyprus look very, very ordinary. And it was similar to what we were thinking probably in the game against Kosovo. Why did it take so long um, to start asking some questions? I will be asking questions of Tommy Wright and Jim Magilton just after the BBC News. C News NI. On Radio Ulster and on BBC Sounds. It's four o'clock. I'm Naomi Holland. The family of a former British soldier who was fighting in Ukraine say he has been killed. In a post on social media, they said Jordan Gatley left the British Army in March to help Ukrainian forces fight Russia. Our correspondent Joe Inwood has been following developments from Kiev. According to his family, he'd been involved in training at the start of this, but obviously that had changed because he was in the city of Severodonetsk. Severodonetsk is very much the front line of this war, and it was there that he died, we understand, on Friday. According to his father, they had been told that he was doing difficult work, dangerous work, but necessary work. They say they are incredibly proud of him and they say he will forever be a hero in their hearts. The Secretary of State has said Conservative legislation to override parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol will not break international law. Speaking on the BBC's Sunday Politics programme, Brandon Lewis said he expects the DUP to form an executive after the legislation is published tomorrow. I hope that the DUP will see it also resolves the issues they've been concerned about, the reason why they withdrew the First Minister and not nominated a Deputy First Minister, and therefore will nominate both the Speaker and a Deputy First Minister. Well, speaking to Sky News, the Sinn Féin leader Mary Lou Macdonald said the plan to override the protocol does break international law and also undermines the Good Friday Agreement. Brandon Lewis is talking through his hat. The Tory government should know that where there are issues to be resolved with the protocol, uh, issues of smoothing out its application, there are mechanisms through which that can happen. Police in Dungannon have arrested three men after a war memorial was damaged in Moy. Two of the men, aged 20 and 19, were detained on a number of charges, including criminal damage. The third, aged 20, was arrested on suspicion of attempted criminal damage. The business secretary has ordered an urgent investigation into petrol station operators amid concerns some are not passing on the full cut to fuel duty. In a letter to the Competition and Markets Authority, Quasi Quarteng says that people are rightly frustrated that the 5p a litre reduction has not stopped prices from soaring. And a runner has won the Man versus Horse event for the first time in 15 years in the annual race in Powys in Wales. Ricky Lightfoot secured first place after beating the first horse by more than two minutes. Runners have only won three times since the competition began in 1980. Lindsay Lima has the weather forecast. A breezy day with a mixture of scattered showers, patchy cloud and sunny spells. Those showers may be heavy where they appear, but will move through quite quickly on the westerly breeze. Slightly cooler than yesterday with highs of 16 or 17 degrees. Most showers dying off this evening to leave a drier and brighter end to the day. A largely dry and clear night ahead with variable amounts of cloud and lows of 7 degrees. BBC News. On BBC One Northern Ireland and iPlayer. Up the taps, Christopher. See what she can do. The Top Gear boys are back. <laughs> Feels good. How cool is that? How many times did you hit a wall? It's a few walls. <laughs> what do you reckon, boys? You two are like a couple of children. <laughs> I've had a go in a fancy dress shop. Well, we just want to get around in one piece. This looks terrifying. <laughs> oh! Bye. All new Top Gear. Push me down, let's go for it. You sure? Not really. Tonight at 8 on BBC One Northern Ireland and iPlayer. Sports Sound International Football with Joel Taggart. 
So welcome back to uh, a pretty empty Windsor Park now. Uh, Northern Ireland coming from two goals down to draw 2-2 with Cyprus. Just listening to the news, uh, the man versus horse race, Jim. There's one for you. <laughs> eh? Shetland pony. Uh, <laughs> uh, even I might back in that. <laughs> um, so uh, it's hard to know where to start with this, Jim. I mean, after 65, 70 minutes, you're thinking to yourself, this is gone. This is as bad as it's ever yeah. going to be. And then a shocking... Keystone Cops. Mistake. Oh, their defending was laughable it was a joke and we didn't put them on, on, under enough pressure listen they're not in that position in world rankings for any other reason than they can't defend so it begs the question how did we conspire to make them look so good for so long we started badly second half really started on the back foot they, they strung a, a, a lot of passes together and it was no surprise that they scored actually and that was you know after a half time team talk where you're thinking right we need to get out we need to start on the front foot, start putting balls in the box. We didn't do that. That didn't materialise. And then they capitalised on that. They scored a goal. And again, confidence gone. We looked out on our feet. We looked just, you know, lacking ideas, lacking creativity, courage. He's making substitutions. And we looked very disjointed. I, mean, I don't think John O'Neill and Jim Bajilt and Tommy Wright are the only two who are saying at this point, you know, can't see a way back into the game, could we? No, you, you couldn't because, um, you know, you just seen that sort of lack of confidence. You know, the second goal uh, drained a lot of the players. Um, we were, the, the, the changes made made a difference. Putting uh, Thompson Con was great, wasn't he? Yeah, Thompson was great. Yeah, the thing I like about Thompson is he, he's always looking to play forward and he looks to play forward quickly and he's sharp with his passing and he doesn't dwell on the ball and he's not one of these to just you know keep possession he's always trying to do something bradley coming on at right back and and, and nothing against um uh Brody Brody spencer. spencer who's young player and a big future ahead of him uh you know connor's brilliant at getting forward you know loads of energy he's got quality in that last 30 made an unbelievable run and and nearly scored from mm. about six seven eight yards and we, we we got a little bit of impetus into the game and they set back, set back, and seem to be prepared to, you know, see out for two 0 I mean, their manager's going to go absolutely ballistic <laughs> with um, uh, Panatoya. It was unbelievable. Oh, that, that never seen did. anything like that. He'd be ripping the patches off the elbows on his, on his nice new jacket. Won't he's they? tried yeah. to dummy the ball. I mean, he's, he's tried, tried to dummy it out for a goal kick. kick. Yeah. for a goal kick, and, and just put it in the stand. Do you know what I mean? And 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 that got Norn. And for play, that got Norn Norn back in it. And then it was pressure, 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 and. Jim's right, it, it shows you that when you do put these teams under pressure and um, you do get balls in the box and you commit players into the box, that you cause them problems because they aren't they aren't good enough and that's why they're 105, yeah, 106 in the world. Right. But we did, we, the, the, the bottom line is we've drawn against Cyprus. We you know, are, I mean, and, that, and that's disappointing again for, for all the... And you can make pluses out of the fact that you've come back from 2-0 down because it doesn't happen very often at, at, you know, in games of football. But... Uh, you, shouldn't be two nil, you shouldn't be 2-0 down at home. We're two points out of 12. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's reality. Line, that's right. Um, and, uh, but, the, you know, for the young players, um, there's, there's you know, good signs. You know, I thought McMenamin was good. I, I, at that stage, we wouldn't have taken him. I, I don't think any of us would have taken him off because he was getting behind and uh, putting some great crosses in. I think we look better with uh, charge through the middle and we look better with White on the, on the right-hand side. And again, at times maybe Ian tries to put yeah, square pegs and, and round holes and it doesn't really just yeah, you know, I work. Agree. Yeah. Um you know, Gavin White as all as all every game I've seen Gavin White for Northern Ireland, he's always looked a threat. Um and you know And how, he's got more in the locker Tommy, hasn't he? Yeah. Do you, you'd I, like to see him going in, in the, uh, on the outside uh, yeah, a lot more. Yeah. And you know to play Shane Lavery there ahead of them, yeah. if I'm Gavin White, I'm sitting on the bench going, you know what, he's playing a centre forward ahead of me in, a, in, yeah. in wide, right? And but we so, like that. So the balance of the team then got better. Um, I say Bradley's energy is unbelievable getting yeah. forward. But I was saying that we like the thought then of, of a, of a uh, Lavery through the middle if he's going to have the likes of Thompson and, and Charles in midfield who are... Well, more yeah, like-minded like, to give him yeah, passes that he wants. Yeah. Yeah. At this level of the game, pace. Mm -hmm. and, and, and John will tell you, you know, defenders do not want to be facing their own goal. And yeah. the more you can stretch the opposition, it will give people like Charles, people like Jordan Thompson, time on the ball to pick passes. 
So that's what he does. He stretches the game for you. And also, he's, an, he's a threat. Mm-hmm. He's a threat. So, okay. Dion the, Charles actually came yeah. on and did well. I mean, because he runs. Because he wants to run in behind and, he, and, and he's, he's energetic. You know, Kyle's at, 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 at the stage of his career where he doesn't do the things that he did five, ten years ago, no. and that's understandable. He wants to come to the ball all the time. He drops deep. And, and some of the times then, when we get the ball in the box... He's not there. He's outside the box. So... Uh, when we did say at half time, we would like to see White, Lavery, um, and McMenamin. Listen, McMenamin can go away with these last two games. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of pride. He's done. He's done the Irish League proud, but he's done himself proud. Yeah. And you know, he's one now that you know, you would like to see definitely in the squads. At the end of the day, as Jim says, it's uh, two points from the four games, uh, and they come back again in September. The game's still to play. Uh, Kosovo at home and Greece away. And as things stand, uh, Northern Ireland and Cyprus uh, both on two points. Uh, Northern Ireland avoid being bottom of the table uh, by virtue of the fact that they have a a better goal difference. And uh, Greece and Kosovo, they will play later. Greece, of course, have that 100% record, three wins from three, and they are yet to concede a goal. Kosovo will start the game tonight on six points, uh, three points behind the Greeks.